you got it locked on Rodeo Radio. Circumstances beyond anyone's control. Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now. And I say, yo Steve, are you with me? I see E, are you with me? Here's a little something by the nigga like me. They never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play. And don't shit mix by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth. I like concert, now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape for two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it, Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix And welcome back, everyone, to Rhodium Radio, episode 210. 210, man. I didn't think I was going to be here that long, but you know what? I'm thankful. I want to thank everybody on the live chat, everybody who subscribed, everybody who commented, liked, disliked, was talking crap on the live chat. It doesn't matter. You guys are still here. You guys are watching. So much love, much respect to you guys. Uh, before I introduce my very special guest of the night, I want to thank uh, 3D Energy Drink for always sponsoring the show. Once again, 3D Energy Drink. Uh, check it out. I always drink one of these every, actually before I work out or while I'm working out. So, and tomorrow is chest day. Everybody knows that Monday is International Chest Day. So, uh, I also want to remind you, if you guys didn't tune in to see Dining with the Wizard with Concrete, check it out. He took the one pack, of, is it the packet chip, one chip challenge, if I'm correct. Even though we only took a little piece, it was still very entertaining. I think you could get a kick out of it. Check it out. I'll be back with Dynamic the Wizard uh, this upcoming week with another uh, special guest. So other than that, continue to submit your music. Um, I'm already starting. Actually, I'm already halfway through December at uh, rhodiumradio at gmail.com. Once again, submit your music. Uh, if you have videos and a short bio, and we will contact you via email. Um, other than that, please do not inbox me, no music, no links. Do not DM me, no music, no links. I really appreciate it. We will contact you via email. So other than that, my next guest, I had been trying to get on the show for a long time because many people have requested him, actually probably since the beginning of Rhodium Radio. So uh, I want to give a shout out not only to DJ Yella, but also to Kiki Smooth for making this possible. And for those of you that had your hand in Rodian Radio and have blessed me and hooking me up, putting me in contact with the artist. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce none other than Little Easy E. <laughs> What's going down? With What's you? up, What's brother? How you doing? Here, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Just chilling, man. You yeah. Know I mean? Relaxing now that I took this long road to come, uh, you know, Bless, bless Rodium Radio. Yes. Now, how, how long was the drive? Because I know you, it took oh, you a minute, huh? Goodness. Two hours. It was two hours. Wow, yeah. two hours, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you know what? We're, uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Today is uh, week 10 on NFL. I know your team plays tomorrow. Yes, Monday Night Football. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you watch any any games at all today? Yeah, I sure did. I, I, I usually try to catch the majority of them the first morning because Sunday is kind of like fun day for me and the kids and uh -huh. relax. So, yeah, Sunday morning games I did. I got upset. Then I, I, I went and chilled, played some poker until I got on the road to come uh, chill with you. But uh, I was a little upset with the Buccaneers, you know, man. Oh, the, dude, that was against Washington. The, oh, the, man. The, the, that was shocking. Man, man, that was that was off. Did, did, did you have uh, money on that game? I or? sure did. I sure did. What I did is I'm, I'm a gambling man. So what I did is last week Vegas tore up the world when Dallas and Buffalo lost. And so what I did is I, I said uh, there's nothing else going to stop me and I'm going to put as much money as I can on Dallas and Buffalo. And I'm like, ah, let me put one more in there. And I, I put Tampa Bay. <laughs> I put Tampa Bay. <laughs> so 
So well, that hurt me bad. Well, my Cowboys, I know you're not a fan of the Cowboys, but. Oh, no, nah, you know, I grew, you know, because it, it, it's funny, though. It's like, you know what I mean? I, I used to play, uh, climb with my, 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 my homeboy and my cousins and my best friends because they're all Cowboy fans, a lot of my family. My cousins from Zach. <laughs> they came, you know what I mean? So I used to tell them, I said, well, man, you know, you know, I, I wore a starter jacket when I was little, you know what I mean? Because it was blue, you right, know what I mean? Right. Blue and gray. But other than that, in my heart, since I was young, being a 49er fan, it's just, you guys was just our rivals. Yeah, you know, I, I know how it is. I know how it is. You, you know, know, and even though we're not in the same division, we're still NFC. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Now, quick question before people think that this is PTI or ESPN News. Um, you think that Tampa is still going to go to the Super Bowl? Because just a lot of people mm, are still saying. Tampa Bay is still going to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, I just the way they're playing. I know it's, it's just Vegas is Vegas. You feel what I'm saying? So I know people do what they got to do, but. Uh, Tom Brady is just, you know, if you hit him, if you do what right. you're supposed to do, you, you can you can ruffle his feathers. And the defense, the way they let Washington and, and just, I know Hennick or whatever. Who's it? Who's that quarterback? Uh, uh, Tyler, what is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I, he has a weird name. It's, it sounds like Heineken, Heineken but it's Heineke. Hen- Heineke. Yeah, yeah. You let him just, just him throw. Gibson just go all crazy on them. I'm like, ah, oh, that defense is not what it was. It was it was built up to be last last year for a Super Bowl champion. So I just don't see them repeating. The NFC kind of is like a coin toss right now. It, it is. It, it really is. Yeah. But at the same time, is there really any powerhouses out there? Uh, powerhouses. I mean, I, I, I still feel Buffalo is. You feel know what yeah. I'm saying? I okay. still feel Buffalo is. NFC wise, no. Everybody would think the Rams, LA. You feel know I me? Mean? Which y'all know I don't. You know I mean? Get along with too much either, <laughs> but. Um, they kind of just have some soft spots, and then they lost somebody. Now they got, you know, uh, OBJ. So we'll see how that transition goes and how okay. that works because I feel like him and Cooper Cup do the same thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, that slot and coming across the middle, and he's not too much of a, a speedster to my knowledge, you know what I mean? So, you know, they kind of just picked up the same thing. They're going to be in salary cap trouble. Uh, now, probably dumb question, but I have to ask you who you got tomorrow. <laughs> if you had to bet, if you had okay, a betting let's, man. Let's just be real who I got tomorrow. Let's just be real. People got to be, and let's just be all the way honest. As much as y'all might feel, much as anybody may feel about Jimmy Garoppolo, he's undefeated against the Rams. Oh, you know, see, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember his first year when he went to, he was tearing it up at the 49ers. Yeah, yeah. It you know. The year that he wasn't hurt. Yeah. When we go, we went to the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. I mean, we got our, our defense is off now. Of course, he got hurt a little bit, but. If you keep Garoppolo healthy enough, you know, he, he's going to do what he has to do to get us there. Our defense is just messed up now. Last week, I don't know what was wrong. So, you know what I mean? Tomorrow, I'm of course, I'm going to sit there and watch. It's prime time. I'm going to talk mess to, you know what I mean, the, the social media, internet, and everybody else. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? We know what it is. It's a tough season for us. If we end up beating the Rams, I'm popping a bottle. Yeah, hey, I'm popping a bottle. I, I, yes. I'll pop one with you, big yes, dog. I'll, and I'll bottle. tag you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so so now bang, I know bang. a lot of these questions I already know, but I just have to ask for the most public. Definitely, most definitely. Basketball fan. Yeah, most definitely Lakers. Lakers. Yeah, Lakers okay. Are, they, we as terrible as we are, they did it for me today. I yeah. Did it for, I, I put some big money on them today, but you know, I mean, we just we got some work to do. You feel what I mean? It's gonna take some time to jail, and I feel like they already set in stone to be up there and be there. So we just kind of like just. Messing around till everybody gets. I, th- that's what I think so yeah. too. The, the chemistry is gonna come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, baseball. Oh, Dodgers. All Dodgers way. all day. Dodgers uh, all day. Yeah. Okay. I would I'm, say, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna let every Dodger fan know. I'm 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 a supporter of Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw's. Yeah. Even though he didn't, it's just hey, you know what I mean. I just always ride with him. You feel what I'm saying? I wish he wasn't as much hurt as he is. But the new uh, Scherzer. Oh my goodness. Ah uh, <laughs> he ah uh, yeah he's he's oh my goodness he's something else. But you know, I just feel like. What's retarded is me, what to me is we win that many games and we're playing in a wild card. Yeah. So, therefore, when we play in a wild card, we're going to start what? Our best pitcher. And then it's like now we sit here and you think about when we start a real series, a playoff series, we're playing catch up with yes. our bullpen. You know what I mean? So, that's I feel like we ended up in trouble like that. You know what I'm saying? Very true. Very true. You got a college football team? Oh, yeah. UCLA. UCLA, yeah, okay. UCLA all the way around. Uh huh. Yeah, UCLA <laughs> all the way around. That's my college team. You know what I mean? That's my college basketball team. You feel what I'm saying? Football team. You see, I'm brewing, baby. Okay, okay. Yeah. My uh, college team is Notre Dame. Notre Dame's nice. I like Notre, Notre Dame. Dame's nice. They're doing pretty good this year, too. Yeah, yeah. I love watching college, too. Especially on Saturdays, man. College, what? Do you know November is the best time of the year for football fans? Because we have football every day of the week. Yeah, you're we right. For Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And repeated it all throughout 
November, throughout December, throughout the bowl games. Yes, I love it, bro. Yeah. I love it. Right. You, you, you ever been to any of the Rose Bowl games? I, was, I live right down the street from the Rose Bowl. No For shit. 10 years, yep. For 10 wow. years. I live right down the street on Westgate, right off of, uh, uh, what is that? Lincoln and Westgate. Yep, yep, yep. Right, wow. right uh, on the VIP street that you go down to the Rose Bowl. So any firecracker show, going to go jog around there, football <laughs> games, everything. I can hear it in my backyard by my pool. Damn, yeah, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. Quick, quick little story about the Rose Bowl. Okay, mm-hmm. my brother worked for Gillette. He worked for the corporate office, Gillette. So I used to get all my razors and everything, yeah. you know, for free. So every year he would say, "Hey, you want Rose Bowl tickets?" I didn't think. Don't ask me why, because this is embarrassing. Uh-huh. I didn't think it was the actual Rose Bowl game. I thought the Rose Bowl Stadium, like a regular season wow. game. And I was like, no, nah, I don't really care, care to wow. go go watch the Bruins play, you know? So he, he was like, oh, okay, cool. But it was a, it was a bowl game. Yeah, it was a bowl. Yeah, so finally yeah, he said, that's, the, that's what it's cracking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he finally asked him, how come you don't want to yeah. go? And I was just like, every year he had four tickets. So I finally went to the yeah. last three right before he retired. So I got to see Charles Woodson when he was in Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Greasy when he was in Michigan. I got to see Ron Dane when he was in Wisconsin. I got to see a lot of greats. Uh, 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 per, um, the fuck's it? Brian, uh, the quarterback for the Saints, he retired. Uh, Breeze. Breeze. Ooh, wow. Breeze. Oh, I got to see him. Oh, wow. Yeah, in college. That's, 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 that's it. Bro. Yeah, man. That's the end. Yeah, and I, I was like, damn. And all, all these years he was hitting me up about, do you want him, do you want him, do you want him? I'm like, nah, I don't really care to go. Yeah. But it just wasn't registering because I was more an NFL guy than I was college guy. But yeah, real talk, real talk. Anyways, uh, let's change, change the channel because people are going to think this, once again. What, uh, is, what about your baseball team? Did you say? Oh, that? Dodgers. Okay, you Dodgers. Dodgers. You with it. You yes. With it. You with it. Basketball? Lakers. Uh, Lakers. You with it. Yeah, I was Hell say, yeah. Don't say Clippers. Don't say <laughs> No, hells no. Don't say Hells no. And, and you know what's funny? It doesn't matter how many times I ask people, like, Sometimes I, I'm thinking, I'm not going to ask him the basketball question because I already know he's a Laker fan from yeah, L.A. Yeah. But I'll ask anyway, oh, I'm a Clippers. Yeah. Only yeah, one guy yeah. said, a Boston Celtics. And I was like, what the hell? You? And living in L.A.? And I was like, oh, all right. A Boston Celtics. Yeah, wow. to East their own. Now, yeah, now, you ain't lying, to East their own. Now, where originally did you grow up at? Did you move around? or? Um, no, no, <laughs> not at all. I was born and raised in Compton. Okay. The only place I left and went to was Las Vegas when I, three days after graduation. Uh, which is a story. Also, you know, when I decide to write a book will be a significant part of my life. Uh, I went out there and started music. That's what actually kind of st- had my studio started. But I was, you know, still dibbling and dabbling and doing the same thing daddy's doing, hustling, daddy was doing, hustling. Yeah. And um, my big homies got into some trouble and, uh, you know, I had to come back home about 19, almost 20 years old. But other than that, that's it. Compton. Compton's where it's at. Okay, so you went to... Uh, Until I got my, my first record deal. Okay, so you went to elementary, uh, junior high school. Well, I don't know, was it middle school, I guess, or in, uh, no, keep in high school? I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you. I went to one school from two years old to 14 in Downey, off, right off of Firestone, Montessori Children's Academy. No shit. Yeah, yeah, right across the street from Stonewall Mall. And I went there until I was 14. My grandmother worked with the lady, and, and, and my father was going to buy it for my grandmother. And she was thinking about it, and she didn't too much want it, but the lady that owned it, my grandma, were gr- great friends. She actually raised her kids, too, and everywhere as well. And, yeah, he just, it just kept me in there, you know what I mean? Once, you know, that's how I transitioned to staying living with my, my father's mother. So then my, instead of my grandmother going to my mom, you know what I mean, who's always been in my life, of course, um, Darnetra, we call her Kuda, uh, Darnetra Honeycutt, um, my grandma used to pick me up from there early in the morning, four or five o'clock in the morning. So after a while, he's like, hey, just have my son just go live over there so it could be easier transition for him to right. go to school. And I went to private school the whole time. After he passed away, you know what I mean, she just kept me in there, and um, we just rolled it out. And once I got 14, I was like, can I try something different? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you just, you know what I mean, wanted to go play sports, do different things, you know what I mean, just live, you know what I mean? He's a teenager growing up, so I went to... Uh, Millican High School in Long Beach. Oh, okay. Went there for two and a half years, and then I went to my father's school and my uh, my home school, which is Dominguez High School, and that's where I graduated. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because uh-huh. I know the majority of the people that graduated from Compton, they'll either say Centennial or Compton. Oh yeah. Uh, well, okay. oh my goodness. Even in my time, that was that was the that was the bottom barrel. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep it one hundred with you. You know what I'm saying? In right. my in my era, even in my even in my era before me, even in my father's era, it's like my my grandmother went to Centennial. You feel what I'm saying? My dad's mom, but sports wise. You feel what I'm saying? I know they had, um, I believe, Aaron Afalo, but that he's younger than me. Uh-huh. You feel what I'm saying? So before my time and in my time, like, oh, no, we always dominated. So even, right. you know what I mean? Then after my time, you have the DeMar DeRozan's coming out in basketball. But even when I was going, we were number one in the nation for years. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You feel what I mean? Like Tayshaun Prince, you know what I'm saying? Like 
just I can't even name, you know, Tyson Chandler. You right. know what I'm saying? He was a year before me. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, my goodness. I couldn't, I could, could tennisly name the, the players that's off the top of my head, but we were number one in the nation. So when you thought, talk about Centennial and Compton High, it just, you know, you know, they couldn't, they just couldn't <laughs> stand ground with us in, in sports until after right. my years. You feel what I'm saying? When the youngsters okay. came out. And, and that was the, my, one of my next questions growing up. Uh, did you play any sports? Yeah, so obviously I played football. You yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. I played football. Yep. All, all, all. Well, ninth grade, I just checked in late. So, of course, I'm coming from private school. So, when I checked in, I checked in when school started. So, of course, you know, they already been in hell week, you know what right. I mean? You know, all that. And actually, this story I'm telling you is one of the stories that's used for all the kids that's actually probably still go there now because okay. I still got a record up there. And my record was um, in the 10th grade or before the 10th grade, I was uh, in a thousand pound club. So, if you put your power clean, your bench, and your squat all added together was more than a thousand. You wow. got so, mine was up there. And the story that coach gives them is, you know, Eric Wright did not play his first year. I actually was sitting here helping him out, like, you know, taking film, you know, filming the games, doing all this. Almost because, like being a scout. So yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying? And stepped in. And then when when season was over with, I was in a weight room. And they're like, oh, man, this kid that we just didn't know what he can do is strong as a motherfucker. Yeah. And then you get out there in pads. And then, you know what I mean? You got the toughest white boy. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, it's hard to say. But, yeah, at that time, my time, it was, you know, big old white boy. Got a big old uh, cowboy collar on. And his name was John Flynn. And he is just laying, you know, motherfuckers <laughs> flat back. Right, right. I ain't going right. to lie to you. He was about like six foot, you know what I mean, being in a, in a 10th grade. Yeah. So uh, we did a ball drill, and uh, I was I was I I actually played the tacular, tacular. And he threw the ball up, and we're doing angle tackling. And next thing you know, just wow, I seen his helmet come off, and the ball went in. Uh, no, matter of fact, I didn't even know the ball went in the air. His helmet came off, and when he stood up, my coach was like, right, get the ball. i like, oh, I made him fumble. So I ran over, grabbed the ball. Next thing you know, it was just known, like, oh, my goodness, who is this little motherfucker? He can hit. He's this strong little <laughs> motherfucker. He hit. You feel what I'm saying? And then I was playing. So I ended up playing linebacker, nickelback, because I was fast. And then I get suspended because one, you know, scrimmage game, you know, I had, I ended up, got sidelined. We ended up starting to fight on the field. I get suspended for the next game. So being suspended for the next game in 11th grade, my coach was like, um, you're going to be the dummy running back for the first team D. I'm first team D since I'm not playing, you know, hey, right. you know, you come out, you know, I mean, it's first D, E, since you're not playing, right, come out and you play the running back. So I grab a ball and I go, you know, do a little moves. He's like, give him a real look. It's a fast guy we're going to see this week. So then I said, all right, cool, forget it. Grab the ball, bam, shook him up one, shook up another one, seen a, uh, one of our starting cornerbacks, dipped on him, bam, you know, just kept going, then getting tackled. They, scre- they, you know, blow the whistle. He's like, good job. Next thing you know, the senior – Running back gets hurt, and then they say, hey, right, go play running back. And it was against, guess who? Compton High. Oh, shit. Just, just think about that, bro. And then my uncle, to this day, my dad's oldest brother, sit here, and that was the game he came to. My dad's dad was there. My whole family was there. It's the first time I'm playing running back. You know, wow. I had 10 carries, 175 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah, wow. What was, what was the score on that Oh, one? we beat the mess out of them. Because <laughs> we're in Moore League. So it's weird how it goes because Moore League plays Compton High. You feel what I'm saying? They play – Lakewood, Polly, you said Wilson, and Compton High. Compton High was in a Moore League. So all my years of playing, I knew about Compton High before I went to Dominguez High School. That's why I tell you, Compton High ain't much of shit. You feel what I'm oh, saying? Okay, Football-wise, right. you feel what I'm saying? And they had some good individuals. that actually went to UCLA, you know, some good players, individuals that I actually know of and follow, but they were younger than me. Right. My time of playing, before my time playing, they was nothing. And then me playing, I played before I even got to Dominguez, it was nothing because I played at Milliken. And you know what I mean? I ain't they sound like that, but I'm playing with a, you know, some white boys, you feel what I'm saying? Right, right, right. A couple of brothers, you feel what I'm saying? And hey, we put the smash down on them, especially me playing running back. We wore them <laughs> out in Jordan High School, which is in North Long Beach. So it's close. And those so same some of them same schools play Dominguez High School. Right. So I was always familiar with them. First game playing running back, you know, senior gets hurt. He seen me do it in scrimmage. I mean, in practice, next thing you know, they're like, hey, right, you're going to play tail for us and start against who? Compton High. So, so, but, that, yeah. Let me ask you something. Do Compton you coach High. at all? No, it's funny. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, not sports, not football. Um, I look, my, I got my youngest, is, my youngest kids is my sons, you know what I mean? My girls are older. And my two middle, I mean, you know, my two oldest, you know what I mean, I think cheerlead, dance. My youngest girls are track stars. So I, I, I do uh, track coaching. 
Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's so dope, which is man. different, you know what I mean? And it's funny because I get a lot of little football players and them little bad motherfuckers, I be trying to get in their ass like, <laughs> hey, check this out. I don't know how y'all do this with football and pop water because they are ba- they don't listen, you know what I mean? But coach, you know, I, I'm not as aggressive, you know what I'm saying, when you're a track coach. But one of the uh, football coaches is a track coach with us. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, who he? I'm like, yeah, like, man, this little boy, he's like, hey, check this out over here. Do you want me to sock you out? I said, oh, yeah, yeah okay, that's how you got to talk That's how you got to talk Yeah, to you got to get in these little niggas' ass, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they bad, but they good. And it was funny, I got a good story real quick. My son, first time playing. My son's not into much sports. He's like, a, he, my son probably could build every, every toy you got right here. Mm. You know what I'm, saying? I'm talking about build it. You feel what I'm saying? That's put it together, build it. If you put a puzzle, you made a puzzle of all this that you have, he'll put that together in a midst of 20, 30 minutes. And I'm like, man, my son. He just like, gifted. it. What? And so, you know, his sisters run track and all that. So I got him in one year before COVID. He was like, he's going to run. So I'm, and this is how I got start coaching because he's eight and under and uh, he's nine now, but he was eight and under at the time. So I'm like, cool, let me go coach him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's an introvert, you know what I mean? Really to himself. So I'm like, let me be out there with him. You got a lot of little boys that I know play football. Like, he don't talk too much. He know me. He know me. I'm like, yeah, he talk. He talk. He's like, he'll get to know you because my son quiet. So, you know what I mean? Um, I, you know, the coach asked, like, hey, you want to help me out? And I was like, coach? I said, yeah, bro. And he's like, yeah, we need it. So we were getting out there, lining them up to go run a 400. Yeah. And sure enough, he's like, let's line up all the boys that we know that ran before. You know, like all the little fast little football players. Yeah. So I lined them all up. Coach looked at me. He said, you want to put your son in there? I'm like, shit, yeah. Yeah, put him in there. I'm like, you know, but I know what my son could do. You know, all my kids fast. So I'm like, yeah, put him in there. But he need, he need just a little roughing up. <laughs> so I walked over to him. I said, check this out. You know how we be playing at the house? I said, you remember daddy playing that game and I'm chasing you and I'm the monster and all do <laughs> Act like I'm chasing you or we'll do when you get across to the 100 mark. You know, because I know track. His sister's been doing it since she's eight. Right. She's 12 years old now. He's been seeing it. So it's now he's really doing it. So I'm like, hey, cool. I'm going to start coaching my, my son to do it. You know, yeah. I got a boy now can do it because my, all my girls been doing it. So I was like, um, and when you get to this point, you're probably going to pass one boy. Now you start running. That's the, you know, the, that first 100 stretch. Right. When you get to the 200 mark, as you're tired, now you know what I'm saying, and, and you want to get it over with and you're just exhausted, I want you to keep running and don't stop until you pass me up. He said, okay, Daddy. So I said, all right, Mark. He said, go. So now as a coach, I'm lining up the next group and the next girls to go. But I keep turning around and looking. I'm like, damn. I'm like, look at he did it. You know what I'm saying? Looked away. You know, he passed by two people. Looked back. Turned back around when it got to the 200 mark. My son's winning. You feel what I'm saying? I lined the next group up. All right, go. I looked back around. Now he's coming to the straightaway. And he just, what, just burnt the fuck out of him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Breathing hard. I'm like, man. And so I don't like embarrass him because he's introvert. So I'm like, good job, son. Good job. All that. But my homie coming from the stands, he like, E. You say you see that? I said, what? I said, nigga, you think I didn't? You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, what? Proud, daddy. I'm sitting there like this yeah. heart bumping and everything for my son. I get you some water. He tired as a motherfucker. 400. You feel what I'm saying? Then uh, the, the head, one of the head coaches, he says, he said, E, who won that group? I said, Eric. He said, what? I said, oh, shit, yeah, my son. <laughs> yeah, my Hell, son. That's dope. You feel what I'm saying? And, that's dope. And man. then that was it. But then COVID hit, man. And you know what I'm saying? That messed it up for all the kids. It COVID messed it up for. High school kids, kids on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With scholarships, messed it up up for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, but I was, I was excited, man. Cause you know what I mean? My girl been doing it. For, my little daughter has been going on for like three, three years, four years. So, you know, every time I talk mess, it's like, I talk mess to you. You got a son out there. I'm like, man, I can't say I got girls, but my daughter could beat your son. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, man, anyway, you know, they can't really line it up with each other, but at times she beat him. So, Hey, what you, you want to write in the parking lot? Right. Right. You know what I mean? But now I have my boy going. So you feel what I'm saying? And his potential that he he can run. You right, know what right. I'm saying? I was getting ready to have a, a year of my life. Oh my <laughs> goodness. But and then it's crazy though, because it's about two days ago he came and he's like, he like I, I was playing basketball, daddy, I shot a shot. But he's like, he's in computer stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Right, like, I, right. I don't force it on him. I of course. play sports, but I ain't gonna force it on him. And it naturally just start it's starting to come on. That's dope. I'm glad you said it. I don't force it on him because I think at one point I forced it on my son. You, you, you'll meet him here in a little bit. Uh, uh, he's like 30 now. But when he was like like Pop Warner, yeah. he played like six or six years Pop Warner. He went to four championships and two nationals. Yes. And but I tell you what, the first year I was hard on his ass, yeah. man. <laughs> and I, that was the biggest mistake. So if you guys, you dads are out there listening, don't be so hard on your kids. Some of them don't even want to play; they just want to have fun. And I remember one time our team was undefeated. We were playing another team from Paramount, and I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, you got to go out there and you got to beat this team. And I was hard on him. Yeah. Well, they lost, but like by one point. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not gonna lie to you. 
I remember I thought to myself, well, I can't wait till I get him home. I'm going to beat his <laughs> ass because he, he missed a block, okay, because he played offensive line. Yeah. And then he's running up to me with a big-ass smile just like that. Yeah, yeah. And I thought to myself, how can I erase that damn smile? He was having fun. <laughs> you know, so after that, I took him to go watch uh, uh, that movie. Uh, um, what's that one movie with Denzel? Uh, uh, you talk about uh, the football the movie. Remember the Titans. Oh, that's a badass movie, bro. Yeah, remember the Titans. Yeah, yeah. he goes, Dad, yeah. even though we lost, are you still going to buy me a hot dog and popcorn? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's yeah. Real. Man. That's real. So, so now, uh, other than that, so... You know, uh, uh, you grew up there and um, played played football. Yes. What did you do uh, after high school? Did you immediately get into music or? Um, yeah. I, well, still doing the bad stuff uh, throughout high school. But three days after high school, I, I, I shook out with my best friend and we went to Vegas. And um, from there, uh, I was hustling, you know what I mean? Doing, okay. doing the dirt, you feel what I'm saying? With my older partners and I, I had a studio. Then I got ownership of a studio, a storefront. And then just living the life, man. You know what I mean? Getting a condo, house, and doing all this. And when I had the studio on, on the downtime, my homie was like, why don't you go in there and just bust something? I was like, nigga, what? So I'll go in there and play around and just switch up my father's verses and songs. Uh -huh. And it was easy because you could just, you still use my name. But it's just like, I might say, you know, Little E, you feel what I'm saying? Right, right. Which is my hood name. You know what I mean? Or I switch it up and just, you know what I mean? Just switch the verses. And my homie was like, man, you you don't know how you sound? And I'm like, so i like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, actually, can, you know what I mean? You know, at a point in time, I was already thinking like, hey, he wasn't, my father wasn't getting respect that he was due. And it was, you know, it was bothering, you know, you hear about a lot about Tupac, Biggie at that time. You got to think, you're thinking back in, you know, 2002. You feel what I'm saying? And then you gotta think what 50 cents start coming around around that time. And, and you know, it was just, it was just still like, you know, you know, like they got, you know, it wouldn't be nothing without pops. Absolutely. And I definitely want to get into that uh, because I have a lot of things uh, to say about that as well. Because uh, uh, when we come back from break, in a, in a few minutes, we're going to go to break. But when we come back, I want to tell you how I first met your dad. Okay. okay you know, okay. and, but uh, I guess my question to you is what was it that intrigued you in going to Vegas? What was it about it? Just um, you were partying at the time? Uh, I had a best friend. <laughs> my best friend is uh, Malcolm. You know, he's from, he's from Compton, and um, actually, I'll just tell you about the, his, my daughter working at his, his thing. Mm. So me and him go back since we was 15 years old, you feel what I'm saying? That's why I said, this is God, her godfather. And um, um, me and him, uh, he, had a, he had a cousin that was like, hey, it's, it's his big cousin, which is, you know, his old, older homie big cousin, you know how it is in Compton, was like, uh, you know, they used to call me FUBU, you know, like, what FUBU doing? You know what I mean? And they're like, uh, I don't know, he's like, uh, well, shit, bring your mouse here and see what he, what, what's that in In his mind, he already had a vision of, of partnering me with me and let's start something, which was a Cali Vegas Connect. You feel what I'm okay. saying? So a lot of my big homies went to Vegas and we had a, a mind state of grabbing this, this untapped market of entertainment with the rappers originally from Vegas. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So we wanted to put them out, you feel what I mean? And like with a California connection, who better am to do it with the, you know, the, you know, Godfather son, you know what I mean? So we, we were already thinking back then, it was so deep that back then, Floyd Mayweather actually was trying to holler at us. Wow. Because he was just, you feel what I'm saying, just still pre-boy at the time. Yeah. You know, he wasn't Money Mayweather. So we was making enough noise like that. We were like, anybody came in Vegas, they are bringing it to our studio. You feel what I'm saying? Method Man, Red Man. You feel what I'm saying? We just, we had a, a lot going on. You feel what I'm saying? And it's hard to say with people is, is, it gets touchy because it's like you hear Vegas and then you hear them, you know, the situation of, of what happened in Vegas and that's how deep it goes because right. a lot of the individuals that I actually was with, you feel what I'm saying, you know, come from that 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 side of Compton that right. had stuff to do with Death Row, Tupac and all right. of that. You feel what I'm saying? Why? Because if you listen to the story, this is, you know, you know, they've been in Vegas since the eighties. Right. You know what I mean? So if anybody really just dissects in and you don't have to sit here and like what you the term dry snitch or something like that, just common things. Right. Now, why Vegas? Why? Because we was in Vegas for for years. You right. Know, Compton yeah. was in Vegas for years. Years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So these were my big homies and, and that's what it was. And so we went out there and I, the idea kinda just fit with me and again, you know what I mean? <laughs> You get handed a bird, or you know, a quarter piece, and say, "Hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, I know what to do. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's like this. You feel what I'm saying? On consignment, and it's like, hey, get it cracking. I'm still young, and you know, what I mean, my yeah. mind state was still, you know, back and in, and in, into that. So, 
it just it just fit with me. And now we built a studio, and it was it was going from there. Oh, dope, you know. And I, I'm glad you brought up. It, they've been there since the '80s because I remember the first time I ever went to Vegas. I want to say it was '87, somewhere around there. And my boy was out there, and he was pretty much doing the same thing. Right, yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'll tell you his name off air uh, uh, because he actually said he knows you from Vegas wow. as well. Wow. Yeah, and I went to go stay with him uh, every so often, and uh -huh. he was doing his thing. And we ran into Compton Heads out there in wow. the 80s. Yeah, see, you know, see them. See, yeah, see, yeah. yeah. And we could talk because it's yeah. probably, it's yeah. probably, you know, I mean, they would, they've been there since '84. Yeah. I'm born '84, so you feel what I'm saying they've been there since I was born. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I yeah. went out there 18 years old, 2002. Oh, you must have been living the life at 18 years what? old. Oh my god, bro, I was trying to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, I was. I'm not gonna. That's why I tell people as far as like, you know, I don't go out, hang, or even get excited about a lot of this stuff. These, you know younger generational rappers but you know be into or you know what i mean or why you won't catch e at a club it's like you gotta think you feel what i'm saying i'll even before 18 you know what i'm saying i'm already in the club and they yes. get me in there i'm in there with mayweather partying with him when he was you know what i mean uh pretty boy you feel what i'm saying we right. just we're, we're we're buying the club out and putting on our own nights so you think they're gonna stop me from coming there and i'm tip i'm putting in my money at 18 years old for this right and they look at it like hey it's little e you feel what i'm saying like oh okay like they was just dumbfounded not to say hey well, damn, ain't the boy, uh, ain't the boy underage? You feel what I'm saying? Right, so right. It, it was just a life, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Back in the days when you had Cadillac trucks, you know what I mean? When it first came out, I right. had one on 23s. You feel what I'm saying? I had my own apartment. I'm 18, and I'm 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 18. I'm going, I'm going to the high school. So I'm, <laughs> I'm parking at the high school. So you'd be like, what the fuck is this grown man doing? Like, motherfucker, I'm 18. I'm three days out of high school. That'll you know work. what I'm saying? So I, I, it was, it was, it was fun. It was living, but. It was fast because, again, you know, outside of just the little young shit, I was right. actually putting on shows, putting on events, you know what I mean, trying to put on showcases. So I was around at concerts, you feel what I mean, at a young age. So that limelight was kind of pushed to me early. Yeah, dope, dope. We're going to press pause right there. We're going to come right back, and then we're going to talk sure, about sure. how I first uh, and when I first met your dad. Okay, most definitely, so, brother, yeah. Okay, yeah, everybody, yeah. once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that little easy ease in the motherfucking building, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Don't fuck around. <laughs> me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright, and a lot of you know me, know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them, because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out.
dumb at the rodeum with the funky drum and you know my man Steve can get some with a fool like Tony A when he play stupid dope shit by WA you wanna spray dumb motherfuckers no doubt and suck a DJ get the fuck out Tony what did you say on what did you say on Tony I have one one new good of a master plan. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 210. That's right, 210. And uh, we're not going to go ahead and fuck around, but we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with none other than Little Easy E. What's up, my brother? How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, bro. Pretty uh, I'm good, glad you're enjoying good. yourself. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, um, I'm going to share this story with you that I think changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in high school. And I heard a mixtape. It was called 86 in the Mix. Wow. DJ Yella and Dr. Dre were doing mixtapes for somebody that eventually would become not only my manager, but mm-hmm. my mentor, mm-hmm. a, a Japanese vendor from the city of Whittier who used to sell at the Rhodium Swamp Meet. Wow, yeah, yeah. So that's why we call it Rhodium Radio, uh, so that his legacy name can continue to live on. Yeah. So um, I heard a mixtape, and I just couldn't believe, like, this incredible mixes a year later a tape drops and it says uh, this tape is called uh, God, uh, 86, 86 in the mix 80, uh, I want to say 87 live or something like that I don't remember the name of the stupid mixtape but I heard Dr. Dre mm-hmm. say Dr. Dre I'm here at the Rhodium and I'm here with Steve Yano and I was like okay I know Steve because I used to sell with him at the Swami when I was 11 years old I know this Dr. Dre from the world class wrecking crew yeah, yeah. I said so let me go to the Rhodium and see how this guy Steve knows Dr. Dre. Yeah. Not knowing who, if I would ever meet Dr. Dre, I just wanted to see how Steve was in contact with Dr. Dre from the World Class Record. Right. <laughs> so this is 1987 now. Damn. So I, I, um, I go to the Swamp Meet and I get there. This guy, Steve, I haven't seen him since I was 13 years old. I'm about to, I'm 18, about to be like 19 now. Uh-huh. So I see Steve and he recognizes me after six years. And he says, uh, Tony, how you doing? Now, I'm not paying attention to him because right behind him was Dr. Dre standing right behind him at his uh, uh, DJ, uh, at his, uh, I guess at his boot boot, at this one. Okay. So I'm looking at Dr. Jack, that can't be him because this is the first time I'm seeing him in person. Mm -hmm. So uh, Steve tells me, hey, what are you doing? I said, like, I'm a DJ now. Well, let me see you, uh, you know, let me see you get down on the turntables. So he had two turntables there at the Swami. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So after I get down, I start Dre, talking to Dre, and then he introduces me to, this is my cousin, I just moved in with him, this is Sir Jinx. And Jinx was probably around 16 at the time. And then he introduces me to one more person. And uh, he says, and uh, that's Eric right there. But I didn't know that that was going to be Easy E or yeah. was Easy E, okay? <laughs> wow. Now, but the, here's the crazy part. Your dad had a little fro at the time. Uh-huh. Well, I, I, yeah, no, no, I don't want to call it uh, the fro. He had that puffy jerry curl. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. He had a puffy with a dry kind of yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he had a white T-shirt, mm-hmm. some jeans, and he had like, they looked like white Air Force Ones, uh-huh. okay? But one thing that stood out to me, and I remember I told this guy, Steve, the Japanese guy, I go, hey, uh, you may want to tell that guy, Eric, that he stole, he left a price tag on his shoes. Because uh, the, the tag was still on his shoes. Wow, yeah. yeah and yeah. he just said, no, that's just his the style. style. <laughs> I go, I, I, yeah, I know, but it says the price on it. You know, it, it, says, it says $100. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, say, little Air Force looking one, right. was $100. So. <laughs> right. So after that, uh, um, Dre tells me, uh, Jinx is producing a record for a guy named Kelvin Anderson, the owner of VIP Records. He has a rapper named Dazzy D that he's producing for. Uh, he may need some scratching. Why don't you come down? He'll play the track for you. and You do some scratching on it or whatever. Yeah. So I ended up going to uh, uh, visit, you know, Jinx a couple of times. And we ended up doing that song at Echo Sound out in, uh, uh, God, I forgot the name of it, Glendale. So anyways, 
uh, several times when they were recording uh, some of the some of the NWA stuff, some of the Easy E stuff, I was fortunate and blessed to accompany Steve to go to Audio Achievements where they were recording everything. Yeah. So that's where I would see your dad, and that's pretty much where I, I like to say our little relationship because the only times that I actually ever talked to him was when I saw him. Well, you know, yeah. so I would see him and I would talk to him. And one thing about him that always made me feel very comfortable about him was that he didn't treat me as if I was, if you will, like non-black, I guess. He treated me like he would treat everybody. Yeah, real talk. Because everybody in the studio was black. I was the only guy there other than the engineer, Donovan, yeah. that was white, yeah. you know? And, I, and But he always talked to me. He, and him and Jure would always ask me, what do you think about the song? And first of all, I'm just a teenager, and I'm thinking yeah. like, what the fuck are you asking me for? Like, yeah. you know, I'm over here fucking nervous. I'm just happy to be here because I'm a fly on the wall. But so Dre tells me, um, I'm going to stop doing the mixed taste for Steve. Why don't you take over, but we'll still rap on them. So I said, okay. So I stayed there in the session. The, their session ended, and uh, Dre goes, uh, we're ready. And I said, for what? And Steve goes, we're going to go to your house. I'm going to have Dre and Eric rap on one of your mixtapes. Wow. This was in 1987. I said, oh, okay. Not knowing that that would go on for at least another two years. Yeah. You know, so... I worked with your father as far as with the mixtapes. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He come over, and I remember one day. I, I want to say something because I know I know Dre would, uh, uh, there's stories that he would punch a man every two bars, every three bars, or whatever. Uh -huh. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It's because Dre was the least back then. I don't know the Dre of now, but the Dre of then, he was a perfectionist. Yeah. Okay? And, but when... Easy would come over and do his his eight bar or sixteen bar raps on my mixtapes, uh, because that's how what we were doing with those mixtapes. We were putting some of their early NWA stuff on those mixtapes to test it, to see what the people feedback was, so they could say, okay, that's will be our next single. So when we started playing Boys in the Hood, okay, that's it. We would put LA as the place. People weren't feeling those. Well, uh, 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 Fat Girl on my jock. People weren't feeling those. Yeah. But when Eight Ball or uh, uh, um, radio or you know um, gangster gangster yeah, 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 yeah. okay we're gonna go with those as singles so that was kind of like the testing ground so I was doing the mixtapes but your dad would come over get her a record crate flip it over sit on it and I'd give him a piece of paper and a pen and he would write he wrote his own lyrics to my mixtapes and he would rap them. So in my mind, I'm thinking, man, but how can he do it so smooth here? But with Dre, punch him in after two bars. Yeah, bro, punch yeah, him. Yeah, it's crazy you said that. Yeah. You know, it's how my life was. It's like if somebody told me, he's like, hey, man, you you could damn near. I didn't see you just do this verse real fast and all that. But when you go in there and I work with DOC or my own producer, yeah. they be sitting there like, Man, y'all be in there working long, but like, yeah, and it's the same thing as you say. It's like they so perfectionist. It's like no, they have to have it like as a crispy one take. Yes, you know what I mean. Yes. Just, just like just, I, working with DOC is, is similar to work with Dre, and then he took me over to Dre's studio and just right. seeing how that they work is like, man, like what? I wouldn't leave the motherfucking booth. Like I'd be sitting there like, give me the fuck up out of this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go somewhere else. You know what I mean? And individuals be like, man. You, you you really can do it, but you know I'm like, I, well, shit, I guess it's all the motherfucking work they put me to. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I mean? But that's a trip. You said that. But your dad was uh, one thing I will say. He was always very, very cool, and I even want to use the word kind because he never made me feel out of place yeah. when I was in the studio with him. Right, and right. I could say the same thing about Jure. When Yellow was here, I would just say every time you were here, you were just quiet. Yeah. You didn't say yeah, anything. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But but uh, him and Ren was quiet. But when I would see like Ren at the clubs, he would like, "Hey, what's up, Tony?" And I'll be like shocked, like this guy that doesn't talk to me at the studio says, "What's up to me right here?" Yeah. Like that always tripped yeah. me out, you know. Yeah. But Cube would come over, and I was once again, Steve would go to Tony's house, rap on the mixtapes, and he used to pay them. And that was their little, if you will, chump change mm -hmm. while they were working on the records, you know. And then when they couldn't do that anymore because they went on their tour. That's when I found High C at the Rodian Swami because he wow. was selling there. So he started rapping on my mixtapes. And people, I'm going to tell you why Disney ended up signing High C. Because he sounded like Easy. That's yeah, what they said. Yeah, yeah. That's what they told him. You know, and I remember um, we would try to go to Priority yeah. and try to get signed when your pops was there. Yeah. And what happened was Priority told our manager, Steve, 
why would I want to sign somebody that sounds like easy when I have the original? <laughs> That's what he said. I, I, I feel kind of like cold blood. I was like, oh, but, shit, that was, yeah. that was mean, but okay, cool, whatever. But we ended up getting our record deal, mm -hmm. and um, we almost had your, your pops on one of our songs. Mm -hmm. But I remember Dre and Easy told this guy, Steve, he said, we'll give you one, and, and if you want to use it up on this one, yeah. then let's do it. And then Steve goes, Okay, let's hold off. Let's hold off. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't want to use that one favor, you know, because I may have something bigger later on. Real talk. But now, now let me ask you this. That's real. That's a pleasure, brother. <laughs> yeah, That's man. You know what? Now, now, now the last time mm -hmm. I want to say I saw your pops, mm -hmm. I was, I believe it was the city mall in Orange County or Santa Ana, somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. And I see him with a big old buff security dude, okay? And I swear to you, I'm not making fun of anybody, but there must have been about 10 white kids that looked like like they were all like M&Ms, you know, uh, all blonde hair. And he's yeah. walking around with a brick cell phone, yeah. still walking, uh, early 90s. And uh, um, all these kids are just rapping for him. They're just rapping Damn. for him. And he sees me and I see him and I don't think he's gonna recognize me, you know? And he sees me, he goes, Tony A. And I was like, Oh shit, he recognized me. Yeah, that's you know? real, brother. So he comes up to me and we start talking and he had just dropped that, oh, he's about to drop only if you want to. Yes, I really want. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, uh, uh, have you got a chance to hear it? And I go, no, he goes, it's going to be dropping. Uh, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to check it. He goes, and then he was already telling me about Compton City G's. Jeez, what? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, holy shit. All right, cool. Yeah. He, he goes, man, get at me, get at me. And I was like, all right, but in my mind, you didn't give me your number, so how am I going to get at yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, he was the worst. One thing, if I could, if I had one complaint at returning back pages, you know, when you, when you beat somebody, dee, 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 dee. yes, yeah. the worst. Get we back to you, yeah. Oh, uh, dude, uh, like I remember one time I did page him through Steve's phone, and he goes, put put some type of weird code. Maybe he might recognize. So I, so I put one eight seven one eight seven one eight seven, and he called back. <laughs> <laughs> like who the fuck did he do? So wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's so now. Weird. Uh, uh, another thing, because I'm doing all the talking, uh, uh, it's because I have a lot that I wanted to share with you, but I wanted to ask you this. Um, is, is the live back on YouTube? Somebody tell me. Yeah, it's back on. Back on yeah. YouTube. Tell uh, all right. When you, growing up with your pops, at a young age, did you ever wanted to do what he was doing? No. Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. No, to be real, no. It was just worried about just being a kid, you feel what I'm saying, at that time, and, you know? Uh -huh. But rapping wise, no, I couldn't sit there and say that I, I as a kid, that I want to do that. I was, you know, more infatuated him doing that. You know right. What I'm saying? But nah. Okay. It, I think the, the drive came more on when he passed away. And then it's like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, it almost was like, you know, it was your calling. It's like so many different things that people are like, man, you trying to be with you, man, they just hate us. How life fell and fall, fall you know what I'm right. saying? Like, I, I, for me to represent a legacy. And, he lined it up for me to be able to sit here and, and, and strive to do that. Other than that, like people sit here saying, nigga, my daddy was here, I wouldn't be doing this. No, you know what I'm saying? I, I, if anything, he probably hoped, you know, had me doing some kind of business with him, doing movies, doing something like that. I probably would have been director and just a film, you know, similar to how I feel like with my son. I'm not gonna put you on to anything that I feel like I am on or like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm just gonna take the path that I see that you can and, and, and enhance it you know, as I can as a father. You right. know what I mean? So. No, and I played football. I wanted to be an athlete. You feel what I'm saying? Right, like, right, know, right. That was my dream. You know? So so, so there was never a, a time where he just said, I want you to rap. I want you to do this. No, nah, not at all. We ain't no conversation about that at all. No. Nah, we were okay. kids. We were kids. It wasn't even no thought about none of that. We were just living kids, having fun. He was a great daddy. You know what I mean? Just enjoying life. So, nah, at that time, nah. Nothing like, no. If you have any any certain memory that you can always go back to and say that was, I was so happy that day or it was a blessing that day that I spent with my pops. For an example, I'll give you one for me. It was always whenever I would go with my mother and my father to like the park on the weekends. Mm -hmm. That was like my highlight. Yeah, We're gonna go to the park, they're gonna let me run around, I'm gonna eat with them. And, 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 and even though I was just a kid, mm -hmm. you know, and I had them a little bit as I grew older, but it was just, that moment that I got to spend time with them. It was almost yeah. like that was the quality time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any memories like that? Too many. Okay. <laughs> too many, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I share some with you. It's And then I say too many is because 
that's what you as a kid when the the hurt and the turmoil comes yeah. you gravitate onto those yes. and hold on to them because that's all you have you feel what i'm saying even when you want to block out easy e you feel right. what i'm saying you just want to my daddy you feel what i'm saying my father what were we doing you feel what i'm saying sitting outside on the back um pond shooting at uh rats and stuff that go on the power line it's teaching me you know what i mean i remember like the back of my head is a red robin uh bb gun red robin bb gun when we was kids you know back in there you og so you know right I'm right red robin probably got it for your son yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you, you know what know. shooting at I'm rats little, raccoons yeah. whatever so you used to sit here and pump it and he used to sit here and tell me now you look through the through the scope <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you just real story how it was he said you look through the scope so he went through the power line he said, now aim, he said, now go above the power line. And he said, now come down and aim. Now, whatever you're going to sit here and hit, you're going to sit here and aim at a different route because you're going to push up. So, and he literally taught me how to do all of that. You feel what I'm saying? It's like I tell people, you may not we didn't get out there and throw no football, stuff that I wanted to do. You feel what I'm saying? As I got older with each other, you know what I mean? Bought me all my football, bought me my helmets. You feel what I'm saying? Bought me all these 49er stuff. But, you know what I mean? Significant things that he taught me, he taught me that. <laughs> taught yeah. me how to hit that motherfucker, you feel what I'm saying? And everything else that I, I feel in, in reference that he taught me is something that I've learned on with, 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 the, with the keys that he lived in life that were positive. You feel what I'm saying? And I think those are the best memories because uh, I read something somewhere where it says it is better that uh, – it was, and I'm paraphrasing it, that it's worth more when somebody taught you something instead of when somebody bought you something. Real talk. And my dad taught me a lot. Yeah. And uh, I don't, yeah, I'm sure he bought me a lot of stuff. Obviously, he raised me, mm -hmm. but I think more of everything that he taught me. Yeah. More than the things that he bought me. And that's why I encourage, you know, fathers because to teach your children something because I believe that kids need parents that they can be proud of real talk real talk you know yeah that's definitely uh, and, and you know just having my own children you sit here and then and, and dawns on you the importance of having it it's like i tell people it's a lot of things that we probably needed back then that we didn't get us as you know what i mean and african-american hispanic us growing up in the and then you know the rural areas of the cities and all that and the other right. when we have we go through tragedy we don't get the effects that 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 you know the 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 uh, uh, hierarchies it will get and, and what they feel will help you know what I'm saying? And, and really it's just the truth of, you know, each kid that's probably going through something like that, losing a parent, you need some kind of counseling or somebody to talk to. You feel what I'm saying? And so I, I strive to sit here and, and, and build up different pro nonprofit organizations and, and, and foundations to where I sit here and will help to that because of the fact of, you know what I mean? Like it just becomes obvious that it just becomes a, a, a just an ongoing trend of individuals that lose their parent, you know what I mean? They don't have a lot, of, a lot of support, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't have a lot of, you know, you can sit there and say some family and this and the other, but you know everybody has a life that has to go on. It has to be a time that we sit here and really give attention to that child, just needing somebody to talk to, you know, to give off that pain too. And yeah. I see it in my sisters. I see it sometimes in me. You know what I mean? And uh, it it could be anything to <clears throat> being in a relationship or being married and 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 going through the ups and downs that you will go with your significant other to where it get to the point to where it's like, oh, well, you just do things that you feel like you just. You know, it should be your way. And I'm like, hey, well, maybe I wasn't taught no other way. You feel what I'm saying? I got to really dawn on that. You know what I mean? Right. Now, as you get older, you really start to dig in on deep of things that you weren't, you know, you, yeah, you weren't taught this. You see what I'm saying? Why? Why wasn't this? You know what I mean? So now don't judge me off of how you live with a white picket fence because my life, and I just didn't live that way. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And now it's starting to take an effect on me thinking about it. The best thing that I know how to do and I tell people is be a father. Why? Because that's what I yearned for, wanting. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm a great father. I love my children. Everything that I do is for my kids. You feel what I mean? And, and I, so I'm continuously to do. You know what I mean? And if it's no woman that can feel like they can just, you know, bear down and get the man out of me that they ain't, they can't sit there and tell you that I ain't you no know, good daddy. You right. know what I mean? So, hey, and that's my godly duty to do. You know what I mean? Take care of my responsibilities. Other than that, hey, everything else is in the wind. Yeah. So, but that's what I yearned for when that's I was awesome. a kid. So that's what naturally was taught to me off of sorrow still. Yeah. Everything else is. No well, you growing up, you know, uh, I, I chip out that you told me you were born in 84 and I'm thinking yeah. I met your dad in 87. You were three years old. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, growing up, uh, I know you might have been a little young, but did, did the neighborhood kids know, hey, that's Easy E's son? A and it, did, did you ever get that? And if, did, if you did, uh, did you have more friends because of it or were you more popular because of it? Or um, 
being young um, in my neighborhood, it was just known. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying. But you get the same thing in my neighborhood in Compton. It'd be it'd be di- probably different things that you go through. Is uh, they want to test you. You feel what I'm oh. saying. You want to be tested, or you think you just better and you tough because your daddy is such and such. When naturally, when um when I went to that private school and I told you that I, I transitioned went to first league, the right. first school public school I went to was 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 a high school. Mm-hmm. I was going through a part in my life where it's like let's keep that on the under. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I understand a lot of kids when they go through having a daddy that's in the limelight. You know what I mean? I went through all the phases. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, you definitely, the kids do go through a phase to where you just kind of want to, you know, it got to a point you want to hide away from that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm on a new leaf and, and doing this. And then I transition to sit here and, 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 and own up to appreciating what I was as I matured as a man. Right. You know what I mean? Like, man, I'm, you know, I'm my daddy's son. You feel what I'm saying? Like, right. got your chest out. You know what I mean? It's how I'm gonna bail, you feel I me? Mean? And 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 then again, I guess because I was going to school in Long Beach as well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, we ain't too much light, you feel what I'm saying? So uh, I went through a process of that, but you know what I mean, and then it grew up to embrace it and you really stand on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh I re- I gave you the story when I the last time I saw your pups and it was in Orange County. Mm-hmm. Then somebody calls me and tells me, Hey man, he just fainted, he's in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Then all these rumors started going around. Of course, I started calling up my people, and yeah. they're like, oh, no, he's got bronchitis. Oh, no, he's got this, and he's got that. Okay, cool. Um, when they announced his passing, I was listening to Theo, I believe, 92.3 The Beat. And I had just gotten to the studio, to a studio session. And it was during the day when they announced that your pops had passed away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I cannot sit here and say that I was close to him, like Yella, Dre, you know, I, that, that would be foolish of me. But the few times that he did come over to my house or I was there in the studio while they were recording, I cherish those moments mm-hmm. because your pops was the leader, if you will, of a group that changed music globally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Globally. And um, before I did this podcast, I started this podcast in 2000. 19 September 11 2019 I was doing a lot of other podcasts just to promote the documentary that I was filming mm-hmm. and every time they would ask me hey when you would do the mixtapes with easy you know uh, how was it and I go first of all let me say this I'm getting sick and tired and with all due respect to Tupac with all due respect may they rest in peace him and Biggie yeah but there wouldn't be no Biggie no Tupac or none of this genre of music if it wasn't for easy the godfather of gangster rap Real talk. and that was always me now I'll say it this way. I used to say that pissed off because I never heard enough people say that. Real talk. Yeah. You know, I was like, where's everybody else? Yeah. You know, uh, this guy was the guy who started it all. Real talk. Yeah. You know, and then, but everybody, sad to say, just wants to give. And I'm a fan of, of Pac. I'm a fan of Biggie. Mm-hmm. But they only refer to them. Yeah. 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 And, and you, Tony, you know, I feel like that because that's, that was, that was the reason of, of me really picking up a microphone and say I'm going to do it. If, if nobody else going to do it, then, and that's that's just the energy that I give every fan that, that hasn't want to look like, oh, you just want to woo through. Well, here, here's here's the, the the drive to that. Like, if nobody else going to do it, I'm, I'm, I'll be damned his son's going to do it. As long right. as I'm living and breathing, you're going to know, you feel what I'm saying, what right. it is. If they didn't give us what we were supposed to get as far as in a state-wise or anything else everybody want to feel, in my heart, my mind, it was, hey, he, this, is, this is the lane that he left for me to sit here and, hey, take care of yours and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm your daddy, and this is what I did. You know what I mean? I yeah. left this legacy as far as for you to go do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not only his first son, but I'm Eric Wright as well. So, you know what I mean? I, as fucked up as it does fuck with me in times in my life, it, yeah. in the 30 some years that I've been living, I still grapple on it and, and push with it as energy. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm destined to do. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? That's what I'm, I'm destined to be. You feel and, what I'm saying? And because. Nobody else is going to respect it. I, I, I'll be damned if his son don't sit here and continuously step any step that he can to make sure motherfucker know who, you know, who started this, who, who, what it is. Absolutely. You know, and, and one thing I did a documentary talking about this man, Steve, and the way you're, you're speaking about your father, I speak about this man, Steve, because I met him when I was 11 years old, mm-hmm. gave him my first job and introduced me to your pops, to Dre mm-hmm. and to everybody. Mm-hmm. And this was just a Japanese man that lived in the city of Whittier. Yeah. So I honor him here. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have no sons. He had two daughters and his wife that are still living. Yeah. And he did good. Both of his daughters graduated from USC. One of them's a lawyer. And I'm not sure exactly what the other one is doing, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I believe a coach. Yeah. But uh, uh, but here his name lives on. Easy E's name lives on. When you walk through that door, who was the first person that you saw up there? Your pops. Yeah. 
you know. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's how much love I have for him. That's real. Uh, uh, Julio G was here too, yeah. expressing the way easy. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, T- Tony G was here. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. That's family. That's yeah. Yeah, man. Julio always business him and Tony G. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, people. with this documentary that I did, I documented all the mixtapes that Dre did, that I did, that your father was on, that Cube was on, wow. that you know, that everybody was on. For me, in the West Coast. The home of the West Coast mixtape is at the Rodium Swamp Meet because that's where NWA would rap on these mixtapes mm-hmm. for several years for this man to sell, and I was a part of it. And your dad is a part of that, big time. You know, that's where it all started for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. How many people can say that they have a collection yeah. of mixtapes that your dad rapped on? Real talk. No, yeah. 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 When you telling me that, I'm like, shit, especially give me that information that he, he come in and write his own shit. <laughs> yeah. That's love, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and, said, and I can play that. him for you. Yeah. You know? So, so um, once That's again, real. we have love for him here. And uh, uh, I had been wanting to get you here so you can share your story. But yeah. now, um, as far as, um, we'll get into the movie a little bit later, mm-hmm. but uh, I wanted to ask you, so when, where were you, and I shared with you where I had just arrived into a studio session in the city of Alhambra and they had announced that your pops had passed away. Where, did, where were you when you first heard that your pops had passed away? Do you remember where you were? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when I got the, 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 the numerous calls, this was like the fourth or fifth time that we heard that he passed away. So this was the final time and I was with his brother, my, my uncle, uh-huh. uh, uh, his, his, his brother, Kenneth Wright my uncle and uh we were there and i was just kind of numb so i had no feeling right you know i didn't think i got a feeling until and she's crazy because she's probably watching but i didn't get a feeling until my sister was uh finna jump off of a a ledge because she was crying and once i seen that i knew that okay this is this time is for real yeah it must be for real because i got plenty of calls before that he was because that we i was either staying with my uncle or my um my grandmother uh, who was always usually at the hospital. So, you know, I mean, um, so she was re- gone a lot. So I was with his brother and I got a lot of calls. So that time I got a call, I was with him. And then I traveled to go see where my sister and my mom was at. Okay. Uh, and then um, we went to the hospital. Before we go to break, we have a couple of more minutes. If you could share with us, when was the last time you actually seen him? My f- Wait, last before his s- passing, I should say. Um, when he got out of the, when he got out of the, the, the last little surgical surgery that he had, which was a clear leakage in his lungs. Uh-huh. And then when he got out of that, have, you know, had tubes in his mouth and that was the last time I seen him. So probably maybe a week, maybe a little bit more than a week before he passed. Okay. A little less than that probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, man, you know what? And like I said, that fucked up a lot of people, yeah. especially the people that loved him and knew him and. You know, one thing I will say is that uh, he had a lot of love for Raza. And Raza really, really loved, and even still now still loves him. And I'll even go as far as saying this, and maybe some people may get mad at me, I get it. But even now, I I see more Raza uh, showing more love for Easy. If I could say than his own. Yeah, and it's good. And, and I want every, I'm glad that you even said that because I want every single one to know that that, that it's, it's it's a trip how you say he treated you genuinely, just, yes. like, like, just like real. That's how we were raised, bro, and that's how we came up, you feel what I'm saying? And, and you got to think that natural realness and blood that he had flows up in his son, and that's how I was. Even from the time, homie, that I, 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 I've been locked up. I, I have a homie sitting on here right now that I did a year with. I was <laughs> locked up, and he'll let you know, and it's funny, because he'd let everybody on his live know that, you know what I mean, that the, the Sirenios, look out for me, bro. That's dope. Like, took care of me, homie, like on some other shit to where, since I was young, I see the love that my father has, you feel what I'm saying, from the brown community, Hispanics, you feel what I mean? It's like, it's overly bundly. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's place, times that I went in places where it's like, that was my, you know, love, protection, and, and all my fan base at a time because of the fact of my father. You feel what I'm saying? So, and, 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 and it even goes to the expect of my own. You feel what I'm saying? When you, you, you think of blood and crip, I didn't have bloods cry to me. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, your, your, your father taught us, you know what I mean? How to, how to, how to, what this shit is, what this is right. about. 
You feel what I'm saying? Regardless of what side it is, you feel what I'm saying? And it's just like, that's the positive that I look back on what my father gives. You feel what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? Like the unity we supposed to have, the unity Compton's supposed to have, the unity as a brother we supposed to have, period, point blank. You feel what I'm saying? He just put on, he didn't have no no division of what it is. I have the time people sit here and say, hey, we just, we shit. You really can depict if he was a blood or a crip, which you knew what it was, but right. he was about, you know, a, a, a G, a gangster, um, you know, a real one. Let me say, people know knew what he was, yeah, and even knew, back then, yeah. I knew what he was, and I was just yeah. a teenager. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, that's just. That's, that's, that, that, yeah, there you go. That's the so. shit, you know what I mean? But his respect lied from from all, all, all angles, bro, you feel what I'm saying? But yeah. as far as in, you know, like you say, the Lhasa, you know what I mean? Yeah, that is his biggest fan base. That is my <laughs> biggest fan base. You know what I mean? The, the, the love and the support that they continuously always going to give is love and appreciated and it's known from the gate. You feel what I'm saying? You, you know, well, Rod Neal sat right here across from me when I interviewed him. Yeah. And here's what he said. These are pretty much his words. He said, uh, I've been rapping for a long time. He yeah. goes, if it wasn't for Rasa supporting me, I'd probably be working at a trash company, you know, dumping pe people's trash. Yeah. He said, because he said, uh, these are, he said this, black people, when it comes to me, they're like, oh, that fool's old. You know, I, I with the old in with the new. Mm -hmm. One thing about us, Rasa, that black music, when I say it that way, I'm talking about whether it be soul, oh, whether it yeah. be funk, mm -hmm. whether it be hip hop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it never gets old to us. Yeah. Yeah. And never. Yeah. That's why you could see us bumping Atomic Dog, like if it just came out, Cutie Pie, More Bounce, yeah. like like if it's a brand new song, you yeah. know. But that's just the way it is. So yeah. we're gonna take a ten minute break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about growing up hip hop. Oh yeah. We're gonna sure. talk about a documentary that came out that spoke on your pops. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a couple couple of more questions and somebody there was a, there was something that came out on Jimmy Kimball. Uh, that's something that somebody said. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, and uh, I want to touch on that. So, come on, come okay, on. everybody. Once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the yeah. shit out of somebody, let them know that little Easy E Smoke. is in the motherfucking yeah, no, building. Like, Comps is in the house. Too. We'll be back ten minutes. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright, and a lot of you know me. Know I like to smile, and to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out for all your dental needs. Be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. What it do? It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. 
Make sure you subscribe and check them out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rodian Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is the Puppet Master team with El Piste. Follow and subscribe to Rodian Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the Harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho. And you're checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. the Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. Well, if this is Mr. D over at Rodeon Radio with my homeboy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? It's Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff DTV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio with my homie Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, you're tapping in with the Steel City Hustlers. This is Rodeon Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Motherfucking legend, make sure you fucking like Subscribe and do all that shit. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live in full effect here at Rodeo Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. You know what it is, boy. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodeo Radio with my homeboy Tony A. The motherfucking wizard. Watch those locals forever. Yo, what's up, Ben? It's your boy Young Hype here at Rodin Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah, doge. Yo, what's up? San Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citra, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo on Radio, with your host, Tony A. The Wizard. What's happening? It's your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodeo Radio with the homie, Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the Mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodeo Radio with the homeboy, Tony A. The Wizard. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. What's cracking? It's your homie Crazy Boy, Blue Rain Music. You're tuned in to Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you guys tune in. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. 1212, coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph Sam rocking beats with my man, Tony A, rocking the SB1200. Let's go. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yella coming straight out of Compton, Rhodium Radio, with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Check him out. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Gathy from NYC. I'm Namasaki with Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. You already know how to bring the NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard, live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. Ah. What's going on? It's Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio Show with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, ah. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Stoll, and you're tuning in with Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your girl, J-Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A. The Wizard. I'll make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. 
Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Like and subscribe. What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Rhodium Radio with the legend Tony A. The Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is. West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Orrier listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You're tuned into Rodeo Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana Sierra, and we're right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. The Wizard on Rodeo Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. And you tuned in to Rodian Radio, where my man Tony A, the wizard. Blah! What's up, this is Darren Vegas. You're on Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Real West Coast hip-hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house, here at the Rodium Radio, with my boy Tony A, the wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo T. And you're listening to Tony A. the Wizard on Rodeo Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? It's Kuja the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A. the Wizard, Rodeo Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Welcome back, everyone, to Rhodium Radio, episode 210. And uh, once again, 3D Energy Drinks for a blessing me, sponsoring Rhodium Radio. Uh, once again, other than that, submit your music at rhodiumradio at gmail.com. Music along with videos and along with a short bio if you have a bio. Other than that, um, um, you know what? We're back with Little Easy E. So... Easy. Yes, sir. Once again, I want to thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, bro. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. You, you know, now, um, I wanted to ask you something that bothered me when I first heard it. Mm -hmm. And I understand people get tied up. People get, um, people have things to do. Yeah. At yeah. your father's uh, funeral, did, did, do you know if Dre or, you know, Cube or, Ren or anybody of the NWA crew show up? To my knowledge, from the NWA crew. Uh, and then you're saying those, because it could get technical. He'd be like, oh, Arabia Prince. Like, ah, right, was he there? He'd say, hey, damn, he was there. You know, right. but we're, we're talking about the significant members. Yes. Cube, Ren, Dre, Yella. Okay. Um, Yella gave me the shovel to put dirt on my father. You know, Yella was there from the, 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 the walk of the casket to the drop of the casket. He felt right. saying. And, and that's just just the truth of it. You feel what I'm saying? Yella just, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it, it's my brother's godfather, to be real. It's my brother Derek's godfather. But, you know, he played that role with, you know, his sons throughout, you know what I mean? And and as much more this, as he can do at the time. Um, but Yella's, Yella's, Yella's been there, you know what I mean, from, from the gate, bro. You know okay. what I mean? I do not, as a child, remember um, seeing the rest of the members. You know okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the reason why I ask is because when my manager or my mentor or my father figure, Steve Yano, passed away, mm -hmm. I know Dre sent uh, some flowers. Mm -hmm. And I had said something on a podcast that I don't have anything against Dre. Again, I, the only Dre that I knew was from the 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. Last time I talked to Dre was when the first Chronic album had dropped, okay? But my thing, I was a little disappointed because I knew he was a good friend of Steve's. And uh, my thing is this, whatever reason you have, I, I'm cool with it, but I don't think you could ever be too busy to bury your friend. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I'm saying. Now, um, just recently, well, I should say this year, there was a documentary released 
trying to figure out um, or uh, explain how uh, your pops had, had passed away. You know, um, did you watch it? Were you a part of it? Did you have any knowledge that it was being done? <laughs> yeah, to be real, to Tony, to, uh, yeah, to just be one, all the way 100. Um, yeah, I had, I had great knowledge of it, you know, being, getting ready to be done. Um, was asked to, to be a big part of it. Was um, pretty much know a lot of it, because let's just be real. It's on Wii TV, you know what I mean? I've been doing growing up hip hop on Wii TV for, what, three to four years now? Uh, for over, yeah, three, four seasons. And um, so, of course, you know, it was. Have I seen it? No. Have I watched any of it? No. Um, I think even that I, I got the, the the cuts and edits of it with, and wouldn't even watch it to speak on it. And I was just in personally, um, I just could be real, I, I, I wasn't a fan of it, and I supported it because of my sister Erica Wright, you know what I mean? And that's, a lot of people may think Erica, you know, is the oldest you know, daughter of my father, and she's actually the second oldest. Okay. So she plays a role as mama, you know, big, big sister, you know, to all the girls, really. And mama to everybody, she just, she just, she's, she's a neutral one that don't care about the entertainment, don't care about, you know what I'm saying, anything else but the love of, of what we are supposed to have as brothers and sisters, you feel what I'm saying? And that's just, you know, her, her, her straight shot of how she feels, you know what I mean, period, point blank, on all of us. And, she had a, you know, a vision and a passion to want to do something with our sister Erin. And, you know, I've straddled the fence on um, not wanting to do it, not wanting to support it, not wanting, not, not really caring about none of it. And then, of course, you know, me and her, and then the significance of Erica, right, is me and her have the same mama and daddy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know the world, you know what I'm saying? Every brother, sister, sibling is love. But let's just be honest, it's just it's a different zone when you have the same mama and daddy. You feel what I'm saying? It's just, it just, it's just genuine. It just, it's just genuine there. It's no, it's no forcing to it. Um, and I, I, I just, I said, um, you know, well, you know, I want to do this for what her, her passion is, because it is really against anything that I really care about. I don't want to do an investigation on my father. I don't want to care about bringing that up. I, I feel it to a point to where his legacy be more of what we and me spoke on about a good that he does. For, for you know, what I mean, every community that he touched on, every community that he supported, every community that he, he that he invested in, or anything, and what he has done to this game in music, you feel what I'm saying? His accolades of trying to get him a star, you feel what I'm saying? On Hollywood, if you're up as far as and you know what he laid down for this period, point blank, and the branches and and the seeds that he planted for everybody to grow yes, in this game, yes. nobody would, we would know none of these motherfuckers. Absolutely, they wouldn't have nothing to say. I won't to continuously go on that route to get as a star and his recognition for that. I don't want to be living and thinking about, you know, the things that us personally have in the field, but it has to be put on a highlight in the, in the forefront. You feel what I'm saying? And, and and maybe it gets to the point to where me and my brothers and sisters, you know, have our own powwow as one, you feel what I'm saying, all together, all 11 of us as one, and do what we need to do. You feel what I'm saying? But as far as in putting out a documentary for that, no, I want to do one to tell his real story of his real life. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Solely about my father. You feel what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And if if, I, if it got to go to the point to where it's simultaneously done with my own story that I'm doing, and I depict and, sh and, and, and take you back and forth and simultaneously tell you how we both are living somewhat the similarities in life and what we go through to the, to the journeys that we can and his being the tragedy can and, and, his, and his son learning to do what he can, you know, giving you a little a thing of it, that's what I want to do, you know, right. or something on his life, him, his self, his real accomplishments, because that movie didn't do it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. You know, that didn't, it didn't depict on what he really stood for, and what really he really was a part of, or what he really had hands on doing. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I think it was, he's not here to tell that story. So who had better than him for his own son right. to go to his own brothers, to his own mother, to his own bodyguards, to his own members, and even the ones that told the story that I could go still go sit down with. The Yellas, the Wrens, the Cubes, the all that to sit here and all of you help me tell this story as yeah. far as and to tell his story. Because nobody's here to fight for his story. I feel people told their story. You feel what I'm saying? That's all I feel like that. But not to take away from the movie because what the movie did is refurbished of who he is to a generation that wasn't even born. Right. So all I can do is just give all praise to God for that. Like, why? I, I mean... Again, son, I done laid out this. Go out and get it. And me and Yellow tore with the world. 
I toured the world. I did a show in Australia when I had to go do a meet and greet outside with, with a, a group of 16-year-olds. And to see her thing, y'all wasn't even born. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that, That's almost like, amazing. That is was, was a beautiful of this, that, uh, been it, you know, it, and I just got out of jail when this came out. I got out in, 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 in what, July, and the movie came out August. Y'all know the date. So it, it's just a blessing to say, hey, you know, hey, this was destined to happen. This right. is God's plan. Right. And that movie just blew up, and then it gave me. When I got out, I lost my house. You feel what I'm saying? I, I had a child out of wedlock on my, on my own lady. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I turned to age. I mean, I'm, I was the age my father was sitting in jail. He, he passed away. I'm sitting in jail. I'm going through all this. You saw midlife crisis of, of what the fuck. Yeah. And I got extra time cut off. And I was out. And I'm going to be out before the movie get out. And I went with my family. And we wouldn't seen this. And we did it all in the other. You feel what I'm saying? And that wasn't really as far as what you feel like the accomplishment. It was what I was be able to sit here and have the will to do to take care of my kids when I got out family and get back on my feet after this movie and towards yes. the world with DJ Yella. Awesome. Looked awesome. out for me and did that. Were, were you and your family invited to the, any of the premieres? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we all went. We all went. We was invited to go see it before the premiere. And, and, you know, we all walked out of disappointed. You know what I mean? I wasn't really geared up to want to go to the premiere besides all the right. hoop live, like, hey, right. you know, let's go represent for the right family. Now, now there were there were uh, things that I have read via social media, via online, uh, that you had tried out to play for your father's role. Is that true? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and time. Uh, so did they al at least allow you to try out? Plenty cool. of times. They actually called me in to, to try out, you know what I mean? And, and not to sit here and for people to sit here and – and give it off like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, um, oh, they didn't give you a chance. They didn't give you an opportunity to do it. They actually did. They probably didn't put me in the best position to sit here and be able to play my father. But it gave me probably like a, a year in advance to go lose some weight. You feel what I'm saying? Get in shape. I'm more stockier than my daddy. You right, know what I'm right. saying? You know what I mean? I, I'm taller than him, man. Tell the truth. You feel what I'm right. saying? So, you know what I mean? I, I just... Just like I have older, his older man built, not to sit here and go back into the early 80s, you know right. what I'm saying, and play that. So you, you'll think that you would have gave me maybe a heads up. People have seen me in, in shape, you feel what I'm saying? People have seen what I, I, I have looked upon being in, 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 um, in my prime or when I want to do anything. So therefore, that's not nothing that couldn't have been done. And then it was an excuse of losing drastic weight, you know what I mean, because if he got sick, you feel what I'm saying? And then it was um, the main one that hit me is when I did go and actually seen Dre, and it was when Kendrick and, and um, uh, Nipsey Hussle was performing at the, the Novo. Long time, years ago, when Kendrick was just not even, he was just, you know, of course, think back, you know, before they started doing production of the movie, so we know how far that was, and Dre was there supporting them, and I, I went in and talked to Dre, we chilled, we drunk, we got, you know, we was drinking, hanging out, and F. Gary Gray came in, you feel what I'm saying, and they sat down and you know they start giving you know their 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 give offs of what it is. Mind you, they have known they know that I went in to audition. Cube is has known. He said he got the call knowing that I went in audition. Me and my brother, and uh, it was more so. Of course, they wanted a polished um, actor for my father's, which is the biggest part. But again, again, I still could have got prepared for that. Um, you know, and not crying on it, nothing like that. So everything as far as because I know everybody who has support of me gave rebuttal to the things that, you know, I, I will say, hey, well, no, they needed this. I have understanding too. The key was is they had a problem with asking me to play my father dying. And that right there I actually understood. Like right. I didn't dine on that. Right. You no, know I mean I didn't dine on like, whoa, you yeah, damn, what you it does happen. He did. You know, like, whoa. And I respect that from F. Gary Gray and, 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 and right. Dr. Dre telling me that. You know what I mean? The biggest thing is, is everybody in here has something of, if we don't know you like that, to know if in you that wasn't coming off disrespectful, could you do this? As in, you know, being the same person, That's losing drastic thing. weight, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. then playing him dead, you know right. what I mean? Laying there dead. Like, I felt that, like, wow. You know, like, damn. So I, you know, Tony, I just like, 
I, I swallowed that at that point in time as like you 110% fucking right. It's right. a whole lot different from me playing a role of me want to play me and, and hey, I'm one of the homies and hey, e, you just got, you go out. Okay, cool. That's all good and dandy. But to play my father dying, like something that I probably would walk out on at that time, right. be fucked up. You feel I'm fucking y'all shit up and all this money and time and all that. And right. you know what I mean? So. It, it, it just wasn't it wasn't meant for me to do I, I was okay with that two, two questions pertaining to the movie um how did you like the actor that actually played your father jason mitchell first time he came out here i i i, I took him under my wing he came to me and yella had i got it on my instagram people see it on my instagram uh me and yella did kiki smooth was there dub c was there i i, I got the picture of my archive I, of awesome course. um and we were at the LA Convention Center. Um, and he came in town. And first place he came was to LA Convention Center. And I had a car, I was doing a car show. And I performed, all of us was doing, me and Yellow perform. And he got to sit here, really see me perform my father's music. And then when I finally decided to mid, mid filming to go to set, you know, Cube, Dub, and, and F. Gary Gray made me give him input on. You know, he actually asked me because he had a relationship with me. I didn't took him like I would took him to a DJ Mustard concert. I mean, party after we left the LA Convention Center. I didn't took him to Roscoe's. We all then he'll tell you if he knows it. Go to his DMs. I did this all by myself, just rolling with me by myself. And then we'll hear stories like your pops used to roll and just we see him like he's, you know, just eat by himself. You know, just something he was seeing with bodyguards. But I just I, I showed him what LA was, and I did that by myself, riding him around. So he formed a, a higher respect for me period point blank so then when i do get on set he comes and he you know axes me and i coached him on that you know that performance we won't easy performance scene right you know what i mean i feel like he did a great job dope, you know dope. I, think, I think i you know do i look like my father yeah hey ask his mama <laughs> you know what i'm saying but the boy did a good job you and even sound like him you found me he did a good job bro i couldn't take it away from it and then, like i said it has its pros and cons but it, it needs to be a tv series you know what I mean? Or a real, you know, depicted movie or document on my father himself. Yes. Now, you had said that after the premiere, your family had walked out disappointed. What do you think it was? I know it's a lot of things, and you probably can't narrow it down to one. But if you could, in a nutshell, say, we just didn't like this, what do you think it was? Uh, it was a lot, Tony. It was I, I understand. Lot. It was a lot, but I'm going to give you a few. Let me give you a few. You know what I mean? I keep it real. I'm going to give you a few. Riding down Sunset and looking up and crying, you know what I mean? Because you see Dr. Dre's, you think, no, no, that ain't my daddy. That ain't my father. No, mm -mm, no, right. not at all. You know what I'm saying? The point of you saying he was doing his worst at, it, at, at you know, at the end of his, his, no, he was the biggest house we ever went in. We just went from Woodland Hills to Calabasas. It's shit. We get lost in this house. You got daddy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Mac to round the corner from Mac Ten and T Bot. You know I'm not. You know his wife at the time. You feel what I'm saying? That she she got. The, you know. Let me stop talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was so. Nah, he wasn't selling weed. Oh, you what? What he kept weed to keep? You know is 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 is. Artist satisfied, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, come on, like, you know what I mean? Doing this and that and the other, no. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I could go down the line, you feel what I mean? Like, the whole old beat up bloody and all this and the other with with going to meet Suge. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? No, 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 no. And it's crazy because I, I remember that day. I remember that day because why? The bodyguards popped up in my grandmother's house and and I didn't see my father. So that's different. I, it's the first time I've ever seen that. I don't see them without seeing him. Right. You know, when I see the bodyguards, if I see them come up early or even after, or you're here, period, y'all in Compton, where my daddy? Where my daddy? That's that's me. And he's not. And I hear him talking to my grandmother, like, hey, is everything okay? You guys all right? This and the other. Like, yeah. You know, as you get older, you hear stories through the grapevine, hearing your grandparents talk and talk, and him coming when he came home and or came to his, his mother's house, which my grandmother, where I lived, and it's like, you know what I mean? It was people threatening and saying, hey, y'all have somebody come up on Muriel. And so I just sent some people to see if y'all was okay. You feel what I'm saying? Like, oh, damn. Damn, okay, so that was, oh, okay. As you get older, you, oh, he went to go meet him. And he did sign Mickey Mouse. 
You see what I'm saying? He did try to threaten him and all this. I'm going on Muriel and all that and the other. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. But bloody nose, all that and the other. Shit, come on, no. Okay. I, 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 uh, is it safe to say that they just Hollywoodized part of it? To- of course, but, it, but it's understood and known. You feel what I'm saying? It's understood and known. You know what I mean? It's just, it gets so animated of me telling you that depiction of that because he got grandchildren. You feel what I'm saying? Right, You right. know, so you catching me of all my life of explaining to them. You feel what I'm saying? Right. He has younger siblings. You feel what I'm saying? Right, siblings right. that don't even know this entertainment world to understand, you know, Hollywood. You feel what I'm saying? The drastic nicks of it. You know what I'm saying? Or the situation of, you know, he's just not here to tell his story. So we can't even look at it like that. Look at the bigger thing. It refurbished his career. Yeah. Things that you got to be more mature and understand to see her give off. But, you know what I mean? The main thing is he has grandchildren. Right. You know what I mean? My, my next thing is because how you had brought up, you know, uh, the scene with Suge and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, this was kind of hard for me to ask, but I'm going to ask because I know that there are people out there that have heard it. Yeah. Um, Suge Knight one night was on Jimmy Kimball show. Mm-hmm. And everything that I'm sharing, once again, is public knowledge. You can research it yourself. And he had said something along the lines of, and I'm, I'm not going to quote him ver- you know, verse by verse, but he said, oh, t- uh, today all you got to do is inject someone with AIDS. And he said that live on the Jimmy Kimball show. And my thing, I remember when I first saw that, I, I said to myself, why in the hell would you say something like that for? Yeah, yeah. stupidity, you feel what I'm saying? And, it, and it's nothing to talk on nobody, but at that time and point in his life and him saying that and every instance of him saying that, because you're talking about a man that 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 sometimes I done sat down with, you feel what I'm saying, and, 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 and conversated with. But and so me telling you this is stupidity is calling this man stupid as this man is going through what he's going through now don't don't take that and run with it you feel what i'm saying it is what it is i'm a man you feel what i'm saying and i'm a man that's about love and and, and what i and higher believe in uh, what a belief of what i believe in so i'm not going to talk about somebody when they're down and out you feel what i'm right. saying or even point the finger at anybody when they're down and out you feel what i'm saying um but at that point in time and that individual stupid you feel what i'm saying just right. talking retarded and reckless because the retarded and reckless because how like what if that would have fell on I know a few ears of that fellow on if it was any kind of realness. It's right. like you you don't want to know how, right. how or what would happen. Right. And then on my personal note to where I would say is he ain't had that much power. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Not you yourself. You may be right. speaking on, you may ran your mouth and a little bit in doodle mouth and, and exposed to what possibly is, is a situation of, 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 of the conspiracy of what, you know, his family will, will, been living and thinking you feel what i'm saying like right. something happened in that nature you feel what i'm saying we right. don't feel like it was that the virus you feel what i'm saying right. we feel like it was more more in tune to it so yeah i feel like you you was a little doo-doo mouth and you right you you put it out there but you yourself you ain't got enough power for that you feel what i'm saying okay you yourself you feel what i mean no you probably you be a bit of alliance with it or some of the money that he, Let's be real. That pops probably was fucking off, uh, fucking up on y'all. Mm-hmm. You know that it, it, it go in this pocket instead of your pocket. Right. You know what I mean? We know how that could get with individuals in any game that you play, any game that you in, a dope game, this game, that game, real life game. You saying you could be a millionaire? Somebody's taking money for you and the other, and you feel it's dr- drastically that you shortcut me. We know what that problem gets to. Yeah. So therefore, if they, you, there goes your documentary. You don't got to speak too much about it. Put that out there. You feel what I'm saying? I'm right. gonna lay that down to a real one, and I'll give you my real spit to it. So in that nature, yeah, you have may have been in in, 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 in the cahoots with the individuals that 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 that's right. messing up that pocket. If it was some funny stuff, but now right. you're the stupid one to sit here and even put that out. They sit here and even blast that out on their doing. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So then and then and then what happens in the nature when individuals do that? You feel what I'm saying? When you when you fuck up the 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 the, the what you call the good old boys. You 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 fucking with our wooten and the other. What happens to you? And I don't wish that on nobody. Right, of course. But of what course. happens to you? You feel yeah. what I'm saying? It's, we all come from the generation of what happens when you when you telling something you shouldn't be telling. It's, you feel what I'm saying? Like even if that was supposed to be underneath the rug for the rest of anybody and everybody's life, you feel what I'm saying? It's still stupid. Why? Because you have opened that Pandora's box to individuals, every millions of people. Yeah. Feeling that way, and then not only that. You fucking up your alliance that you feel was probably the only alliance that you had with anything to help you go. And then now look where we at. And again, this is not to talk about people. Right. We just talking about real life. That life is real. That whole concept is what you give off, you get back. 
Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and, and all that thinking that, oh, well, I'm a part of a, a, a cult or a union, and, and hey, we did that, or we just give a nigga a shot. We just give a woot doop woot doop and I'm just an ignorant nigga to sit there and say all that and, and come up and buck my chest up and say we did that. Right. Now where are your people at? Right. Now where they at looking out for you? Yeah, yeah. Now what are you doing? Right. Because why? There ain't no lawyers to sit here and get you out of this situation. Again, not to talk about it, but it's right, just really what you give off, what you give back. So it was stupid. Yeah, yeah. It was stupid, period. You ain't that powerful as we know and we see. And it was stupid. And if you feel like you were that powerful, what else other than, 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 than anything that you can't get back? Yeah. Rotten or sitting in somewhere that we none of us want to be. Yeah, you're absolutely right. None of us want to be. Yeah. You know what, thank you for answering that. It was hard for me to, uh, to, to say that because when I first heard that, I was just like, what the hell? But I left it alone, I didn't speak on it, but I just needed to bring that up. But switching channels here. Your dad had signed Brownside, Toker. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, people wanted me to ask you, the fans, did, did you ever get a chance to meet what? Toker? Look, look, look at that. Uh, that was one of the ones I did get to. But when you say memories, because we stopped with Shut Court when I was telling y'all about the BB gum, but here goes one. But again, see, those were memories of Easy e still because let me tell you this story. We used to go to uh, Disneyland all the time. You feel what I'm saying? Some people say, hey, when did you ever feel like you understood that your father was somebody? I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, well, he was daddy. But you know, we used to go to Disneyland all the time. And when we start going and we start seeing that people were lining up to take pictures with my daddy, that was a bigger line in the rise in the picking picture with Mickey Mouse. <laughs> That's when we start saying, like, oh, damn. Like, Daddy, come on, we want to get on Splash Mountain, the, 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 the you know, Toontown and all that and the other, and we'd sit here waiting to take pictures. You feel what I'm saying? And so then one time it was just always it's just stuck in my memory. Is we wanted now we wanted our picture with Mickey as a family. And other people were lined up. So, you know, my father having a hard loving the kids. He, you know, letting people go. And sure enough, he say, look at that punk ass Mickey over there. Better hurry up, Holmes. You feel what I'm saying? Fucking beat Mickey ass, homie. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is Toker. Young as a motherfucker. With us at Disneyland. So people say, hey, when do you ever remember kicking when Toker was with us when we did family outings? Toker was with us for what? Oh, plenty of times. Toker's been in the city hanging out with my pops plenty of times. And I just significantly remember it because why? The way he talked, being eight, nine years old, seven years old, like, he finna do what to Mickey? Like what? <laughs> it's, it's like Mickey better hurry his punk ass up, homie. You feel what I'm saying? Like we'll do it, homies. He's taking too long, homes. You know what I'm saying? Got to take a picture with the kids. Gonna fuck Mickey up. Whoa! Like what he say? Like what? And that's Toker. That was Toker. So that's that. What do I? Toker. What? And 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 up until his resting, man, he just he's always been supportive of the family. Take care of the family. My sister Erica. He's been she's been out there in Mexico with him. You know what I mean? With him and his son and his family and his wife. You know what I mean? Still keep connected with them. You know what I mean? Still go love and support. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's his family, brother. You know what I mean? God rest his soul. But Toker's been with us since we was. <laughs> Sometimes Toker been. I've been knowing Toker for 33 decades. <laughs> three wow. decades, bro. Hey, that's wow. how I can really say. I'm telling you my age, but I can know Toker for three decades. Okay, yeah, that was one thing that but, yes, a lot of family. people wanted to ask. You know, like, hey, ask him. Because people, one thing, uh, uh, I interviewed um, uh, Wicked um, from the Brown side. I interviewed his brother uh, up here. Uh, I interviewed Lady Benz. I interviewed yeah, a lot of yeah, people, yeah, all, yeah. all of them. And uh, um, they all had, you know, stories. Um, Tony G, you know, they all shared his story. So I needed to hear your side yeah. of Toker. So people have always asked, though. Well, uh, oh, yeah, Toker, that's family, brother. That's family. Awesome. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, if I'm correct, growing up hip hop. Yeah, okay. growing up hip hop. How did you get connected with that? Wow. How did that come about? Uh, it's a trip. Okay, so um, we have, we had a um, a pilot. Uh, my sister's uh, my uh, my sister Erin that did the documentary EB, uh, remarkable. Um, all my father's kids, uh, each and every one of us. I'm not fighting all of them. So if I forgot a name to say, all of them, Tony. And it was called a uh, um, growing up the right way. And we did a pilot, and we were pushing for our TV show, uh, and. Just our real life, and it was an investigation the girls wanted to do, as well in that. And you know how you know how life is; they they, they take it and just still form it and do it do it they own. You know what I'm saying? Without us having 
full ownership of anything. That's life in this entertainment world. But uh, doing that, it got picked up for four se- uh, four episodes. We wanted ten. So we put it on the table for a minute um, until somebody really wanted to pick it up, and we kind of like wanted to bump it up. So they, that same uh, network, which is E1, uh, was of course was the founders of Growing Up Hip Hop, and they were like, "Hey, Eric, we kind of been wanting you since we first started, and you know, you know, now that we ran this pilot, we feel like it makes sense to kind of, you know, bump this up and see if we get you a runoff and 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 your your kid, your, your family story." So I was like, "Hey, cool, you know." I've been growing up hip hop. Cool, let's do it. You know. Now, for those that have possibly never seen it, or or possibly hearing about it for the mm-hmm. first time, what exactly is growing up hip hop? Growing up hip hop is a, you know, more so as outside of loving hip hop, it's the more you know, more taste, more class of the kids that actually grew up in hip hop. So you have Rev Runs kids, the Simmons. You have uh, you have Masterpiece kids at a point in time. You have uh, Dame Dash's son. You have uh, Salt and Pepper who's on there. Tretch who's on there, and, and their child Egypt. And um and Tyran, you have me myself being Easy Son, and then you know Twist, who of course came through Young Money, Little Wayne, and then basically it's just a, a group of us and all that kind of you know formed and have all of us have our own connection of knowing each other, and then as time went on, being on here for about, you know four or five seasons, you know have grown with each other, and you know we all have our own little stories, and basically it's just our our, our stories, our lives, of what we're doing and living, you know what I mean, in our in our you know in the same atmosphere as our parents, you know, growing up right. hip hop, you know what I mean? Okay. Now, where can people catch this? What oh, channel? On WeTV, on WeTV every Thursday night. So we uh, we come out this January uh, on WeTV. We come on every Thursday night. We also got picked up on a new network called All Black, and they're also going to air us. We air new Thursday, and they'll air us that following Monday again. So we're on new two networks now, you know what I mean? So, like, we got to be paying the bills. We doing what we got to do. That's you know dope, what I mean? Man. They got us on two different networks, two times a week. You know what I mean? So. D- d- dumb question. Are you enjoy doing it or is it work? Or is it uh, both? Both. Work in an aspect of, uh, like, yesterday I filmed with my kids. So just, you know, one good day of filming, you know, as a family event or you're just your own personal life can be a little lot dealing with, you know what I mean, a, a TV crew, a camera crew, and depicting as far as, in, you know, what aspect, what we got to do, what we're doing. Um, do I like it? Yeah, because it's real. I, everything that i done was natural and real. You feel what I'm saying? Everything that i done was, you know, real thorough. I've been in some stuff to where, you know, you're like, ah, shit, I got to be in this. But, you know, you kind of just use your, your your right thought of process and, and just thinking for the best, which is basically me being a mediator a lot of times. You know, I have my occasions where, you know, I was in incidents where, uh, you know, old female I was dealing with or doing something with threw some drinks in my face and you 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 got you la- outlash and and I'm ready to sit here and, sh- and shoot up the whole building <laughs> but you know what I mean after I, I calm down and pull away from it you know and your executive producers call you you're like fuck it use it it's good for tv you know I'm cool I'm smoking a joint it is what it is no nigga wanted to fight me it's a female I can't fight her I don't want to fight no girl or no woman whatsoever so therefore it is what it is if she had a brother then I, I get my you know my aggression off on him but you know, you go through little bullshit like that that you'd be like, hey, this is fucking work, the job. This is that. That's in an aspect of work. Right. But other than that, you know, it's real. We give you what it is. You feel what I'm saying? And what they basically do is people say, hey, well, why this person is around this person? Because if if Tony invites us all to a podcast, we all come to the podcast. Now he has us all in the room. We have to associate or see each other. So some shit's going to happen. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, especially you inviting two that ain't talked in like, you know, two or three <laughs> weeks or you know, since the last time they argued. So that's how you get that. You know what I'm saying? And um, the editing is what editing is. So when people say fake, it's what the editing is. They may have cut off what I said to Tony and only kept this much. So it looks like I'm arguing with Tony about shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the editing will cut you off to make it. People think like, oh, well, no, nah, I didn't say that. Oh, see, that's what they fake. Woo-too. No, they just edited for that. But a lot of shit went on, maybe more than what they're really showing. You feel what I'm saying? But other than that, it's work because, you know, you're filming four or five days a week. I got a test, COVID test every week. You feel what I'm no saying? Shit. Yeah, I got tests every single week. So that's work. You know, I don't I probably tested more than I know. Plenty of people have not left you don't work in a hospital, but every Monday or Sunday, I'm you know what I mean, since the beginning of COVID, every week. You feel what I'm saying? Wow. Sometimes one time I had to do it four times a week because Somebody was uh, a close contact and positive, so they had to give me 24 hours. But then in the 24 hours, they're still going to each 24 hour test me to make sure, test me to make sure. And all praise you to God, I've been flying colors since this thing came. You know what I mean? All, all blessings to individuals that had contracted to it or had situations to it. But you know what I mean? Um, we had to stay on the safe side, so I, I test a lot. And you know what I mean? That's just 
I got to stay cool and, you know, I'm, I'm awesome. thankful for being healthy. So that's the work part of it. Like, shit, man, I don't want to do this shit all fucking week. Right. Hey, sticking to your brain. Like, oh, what? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Every week, like, what? It's like, shit, I just did this last week. I just did right. this last week. You in there crying and shit. Sir, you all right? Like, what happened to the last nurse? <laughs> Why? Because she was starting to take it easy on me. You get this 60-year-old motherfucker coming here. He's, I got to get up in there, you know? Fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Now, 2022 is upon us. We probably got about another, what, a uh, month and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, what can people expect from Little Easy E 2022? Music, film, oh, yeah. documentary? What are we looking at? Oh, man. Every, everything's coming. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, a new season of Growing Up Hip Hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that because we worked through the pandemic. You feel what I'm saying? Working now. Been working since it started. You feel what I mean? Despite I have, what I have to go through. But I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it. It's a blessing. And um, I have my medical marijuana company that was actually thrived, you know, more than cookies, actually, at a point in time uh, during the pandemic. And it's called Rich and Roofless. It's an outdoor uh, cannabis medical marijuana. And I'm in 95 dispensaries. I just did a, my Nuggle Media company, who is actually, I, I've traded, a publicly traded company that I'm part of, uh, did a big deal with Kaya Group, uh, a big, the biggest Jamaican brand in, I mean, the biggest medical marijuana brand in Jamaica. And we actually just finished our deal, and we should be wrapping it up uh, this December. And you know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that. So that's been pretty good. So that's in tie with my company, which is Rich and Roofless. And, you know, we do, you know, merchandise. You feel what I mean? But it's my company. I have Kiki Smooth as one of my artists, my brother, Baby Easy, uh, Compton Musa, Latoya Lane. And, uh, you know, we're not playing no games in that. So, you know, trying to come strong. And I'm going to finish in my EP, which is titled Yellow Brick Road to Compton. That is also coming with a documentary and a biopic of my life a little bit after the release of the uh, EP. And a new single coming this uh this month actually you know and all this will be coming this new twenty twenty two, this month, new single, new single, new awesome, single this month, yes. awesome man, yes. I would love to hear. It that. ain't over, it's still out there. I just I put it out just a teaser, let people know that I was I was gearing back up, but now I'm just finna start getting the ball rolling. But like I said, I had to finish this deal. Been doing TV, so it's been taking some time from me. And um, you know, I mean now I'm you know back in the gym, back working out, back focus minded. You know, kids back in school, life in the world is trying to turn the right way. And I just put some uh, more content out there for the, for the fans and finally give an EP for the fans that's actually been rolling with me for the music, you feel what I'm saying? I, I actually have gotten into this TV and film, so it has taken me away. It, it do pay pretty decent, you feel what I'm saying? So it keeps me busy, but, you know, I want to focus on all my fans all around that actually been down for me from day one and actually my father's real fans because I wouldn't be doing this without him. And I appreciate the ones that kind of tag along and say they want to know little Eric. They want to know little right. Easy. You feel what I'm saying? I, I appreciate that. You feel what I'm saying? But, again, I do this for them. But it, so it's highly appreciated that individuals has branched off to say, hey, we want to know, you know, we're fans of both of you guys. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I want to give them an EP, you know, Yellow Brick um, Company. You had mentioned something about – uh, because I am shocked, and correct me if I'm wrong, your father does not have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yet? No. If, if, to the best of your ability that you know of, why? You think of all kind of things as a son, you know, that I always think about, you know. Um, it even get down to the fact of, you know what I mean? It's like, let me say, like, I got to a point in time where my, my, my conspiracy on my father and what he's done and, and, and how, like, me and you had the same feeling. Like, right. he was kind of, like, overshadowed by Tupac and Biggie. And Big time. simultaneously died years after him. And it was like, hey, let's highlight, and, you know, this shit happens. You know, conspiracy, like, hey, let's, let's th these individuals that, that got the people end up dying. So we kind of forget about Easy e you feel what I'm saying? We yeah. kind of kind of trying to, you know, smear that off, you feel what I mean? Quite yeah. as kept. It'd be significant date that some things happen when they got shot. It'd be on his birthday. You feel what I'm saying? When this happened, it'd be on time that, you know, something significant on my father. So I always just psychologically thought, it's like, damn, you kind of think of this. The world is really on some shit, which, hey, you know how we think. You think that they always would try to do something that revolves around my father to highlight it with somebody else to sit here and kind of take away. Then we want to sit here and say, hey, he died of AIDS. So it's kind of like, you know, kind of scaring people away. That's kind of, uh, back in the days. You know? Yeah. You weren't homosexual, you know, man, or something's going on. You know what I'm saying? And and, and let's let's give off that all to him. So, therefore, it could be kind of like, you know, more diminished of what his accolades were. And for the longest, I feel like, who knows what is it? Because, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, why wouldn't you give him that? The only things I can think of is back to the negative things and things that I feel like, you know, you're always trying to undercut 
him. You feel me? So, oh, he didn't write his music. Oh, he didn't really do this. Oh, you know what I mean? He, Bullshit. You know, oh, whoop doop did the other. Oh, you know what I mean? Maybe the whole, you know, gangster you know, dying of this whoop doop was just a little sensitive to the, you know what I mean? The, the, yeah. the, the Hollywood world. Who knows? But you ask yourself plenty of times. Anybody who has the judgment of why or what you're supposed to get to have one is why shouldn't he have one? You right. wouldn't have the ones that you've been given. Snoop Dogg's, Ice Cube's, Dr. Dre's, 50 Cent. Let's just line up all them that you just recently did. I don't care. Go to the white boy. Go to Eminem. You feel know what I'm saying? You wouldn't yeah. have none of that. None of that. It all started, none of that. It all started, it started with him. It wasn't from my father. Yeah. None of that. I don't care how creative. I don't care how, you know what I'm saying, just talented any DJ, producer, or anything is. If you didn't have that shot to be given... You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I even put you on a whole different trend of what you're supposed to be. We all, like Yella could tell you, it was my pop's idea to dress in all black. Put all this on. Raiders, this, that, and the other. This is what we're going to be. This is what we're going to be. Not do, 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 you know. Then do it, do it, do it. Not to take nothing away from it, but right. we're talking about what your success came from. We're talking about what blew you, what got you out the door. The man with the vision. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like like Cube said, Yoda. You feel what I'm saying? He kind of knew what was beforehand. He had a he had a uh, um, cry now smile you know cry now smile later movie script that he wrote up. The story was about a Hispanic friend and a black friend growing up, going through the the, the you know the problems in life and all that and the other and how you know they kind of get the separation the politics we deal with you know. Of course. Look, he had that back in before 95. Yeah. A, 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 a game where you could sit here and go and hit his switches and ride around. And if I could figure out how you could jump out, probably go jack somebody or take somebody's low rider, I can get it. Grand Theft Auto. This is stuff that he was thinking about like way back right, then. Right. Yeah, he had the vision and beats, speakers. You feel what I'm All of that stuff. Now, what you got? We, we, we billionaires because people billionaires off of beats and headphones and all this. This is stuff and visions that my father had before we had internets and all of this, right. social media. You feel what I'm saying? He's all these endorsements and this, that, and the other going on. You feel what I'm saying? Like, right. this is his time of that. You feel what I mean? Like, how he shouldn't have that. You know, he was an inspiration to all of this. You feel what I'm saying? He inspired all of this. You feel what I mean? He was the originator of all of this. You feel I me? Mean? Period, point blank. There's nothing that you can sit here and lay down that comes from any vein, any vein from that tree. You feel me? If it wasn't for him planting it. So why wouldn't he have a star? Yeah. Uh, I, I have to agree with you. And uh, I don't understand it, but hey, you know what? Uh, let's make it happen somehow. You no, know, most definitely. That that's 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 the that's the other accomplishment in life. You feel what I'm saying? This was a rumor, and we're wrapping it up. But I have to ask you this because I just remembered this that I heard years ago, and uh, I'm not sure who somebody touched on it um, on the internet that he had gotten a threat uh, from the KKK. Did you know anything about that? Uh, I remember the FBI. I remember or notifying things. him that there was a threat. Mm, probably, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it because when I was younger, we we heard about a lot of threats. We had a threat. We shit. I can even tell you threats when he died. You feel what I'm saying? That wow. that, that family has as that's another story. But KKK, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't knock it. Once if the FBI sent one, shit, they probably gonna sit here. We just gonna forge it and sit there and say the KKK sent that one. We gonna send this one so he could think he's getting threats from everybody. Who knows? That's how I think. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. That's how I think. You know what I'm saying? Like I just be, I'm a, I will sit on that. Like man, if I got a threat from over here, I ain't no telling any of them. And they happen to be uh, a couple of whites. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't right. think that one of his cousins in back door another threat. They ain't talking about KKK right. coming at me. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past. But I, I remember, you know, the FBI. I remember, you know, different organizations. You feel what I'm saying? You know, right. want to ban them, stop this. You're nothing right. but. Giving off, you know, the, the the devil's music, you know, what I'm saying, keeping the people <laughs> the below and all this, you know, you ain't got this right. You're calling us bitches and all of this, and what you think about your sisters and your mama and all that. And the other, and he got to tell you how he feel about that. A bitch is a bitch, <laughs> you know. What I'm saying, that's that's it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying, but you know, all kind of things he was, he, you know, he's going through. You got your pants hanging all down. You guys are just, 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 just a nasty. You know, you boys are nasty. <laughs> you know? Earlier, you had mentioned about conspiracies that how uh -huh. you, at one point in your life, how you were thinking. Yeah. Now here you have Easy E, at least in my mind, probably the most powerful voice in rap at that time. Okay. Yeah. 
he passes. Mm -hmm. The following year, Pac passes. Yeah. The following year, Biggie passes. passes yeah. The most powerful voices at that time. Now, see, when you look at it from the outside looking in, you think, fuck, is that a coincidence or what? Yeah. Yeah. And, you and, know? That's, and, and it's real. And that's how I feel like in order for us to sit here and give less give less sorrow to Easy, you feel what I'm saying? Here comes this man getting shot. What I think when it was his birthday, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then passing away the year after, you know what I mean? And here right. comes more. So it's like my mind always thought like, man, they trying to, you know what I mean? They just, ah, uh, you know what I mean? And then it's always like, okay, you, 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 you die of AIDS, you feel what I'm saying? But you die, you get shot up, you feel what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like depicted so high up here, you feel what I mean? So it's kind of just give less light in a sense how I felt being young back then to, you know, my father's passing away. You right, know what right. I mean? Like, you know, that's just, you know, you come around, you don't think it's birthday, you come around, oh, it's the day. And then I'm not to take nothing from it. I'm sorry if, if, if you feel my, 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 you know, you know, exaggerationist or acting or depicting is, is any disrespect to anybody, but you know, you got his birthday, you do it and you got like, oh, you know, Pop, Pop got shot, you know, around this time. Like, uh, you know, Right. Okay. Um, any acting, any movies that we're going to see you in anytime soon? Oh, man. Yeah. We've got, actually got a comedy we have coming out, you know what I mean? With uh, Marcus Polk um, uh, uh, called Bomb Pizza. You feel what I'm saying? It's a comedy that's going to come out. Um, I think I have a few scenes on a, a few good, a few, you know what I'm saying, up and coming movies. But myself, uh, I'm, I'm just getting into the understanding of knowing how to sit here and write a script. So, you know what I mean? That script is pretty much be finished. And then, uh, you know, if it, I, 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 you know, I got the blessings of putting my own dollars in it. So if I has to go that route, it's going to be definitely put out my own. You know what I'm saying? Dope, dope. And okay. It's also titled Yellow Brick Road to Calvin. <clears throat> Last two things and we're out of here. Anything I didn't ask you, anything you want to bring up, anything you want to promote? I'm oh, nice. Nah, pretty much everything, man. You know, they can all to go littleeasy.com. That's where you're going to find everything pretty much I'm going to be doing and uh, all the music and every content that I have coming out. Uh, that has going on with me, you know, I mean, Richard Ruthless is my company. Um, you know, I shout out the artists and, you know, we have some big things coming on. So pretty much that it. Growing Up Hip Hop will be here this uh, first year, first, the January 2022 new season on All Black and We TV. So, um, nah, man, we just, you know, stay grinding and working. You pretty much did it, Tony. I appreciate that. All good, all good, my brother. Shout outs and then we're done. Yeah, oh, man, you know, um, again, shout out, you know, I mean, Richard Ruthless, Big A, CJ, you know how we do, Ryan, you know what I mean, um, Carl. My brother, baby, easy. You feel what I'm saying? Kiki, smooth. We know what it is. You feel what I'm saying? Much love and appreciation to you because you helped this as well. Yes, sir. Get this going on. You know, my artists and uh, Compton Musa, you know, Latoya Lane. You feel what I mean? Uh, DL. You know what I mean? Just the whole family. My kids, they know I love them. My sister, you know what I mean? The whole right gang. You feel what I mean? They know what it is. And uh, much, much, much appreciation and love always to my grandmother, Katie Wright. Awesome. Awesome. Well, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bro. God bless, man, God bless for coming you, through. For sure, for sure. Uh, uh, rest in peace, yeah. Eric Wright. You know, and uh, uh, the day that he does get a star, I will be there. Oh, my, most definitely. You already know. You invited, brother. Most if I definitely. don't, I feel some type of way. If I don't <laughs> see you now, Tony, what? You didn't got me here with these stories and this yeah. this connection that's beyond beyond, brother. Like. You know what I mean? That's beautiful, and I got to give you a flower, brother. I really appreciate that, just that acknowledgement and, and, and hearing that story, brother. That's like, at my age in life, is still a jewel that you giving me as 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 a, as a as a friend or associate of my father, that a real one that I could take to heart. To right. hearing that about his mixtapes and what he did, yeah. brother. Thank so you. Thank if you. I don't see you, if we get a star, I'll, I'm taking that person. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> I'm, take, I'll, I'm telling all the women, then, what? Uh, Tony got me over here crying, brother. What? Brother didn't show up. But All that's good. real, brother. That's that. I appreciate this. Interview. All good, my brother. Thank yeah, you, man. Yeah. Thank you for blessing us. Once again, uh, let me give a couple of shout outs. Once again, to Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. Uh, follow him at 81. Uh, my boy, Anthony, the Hip Hop Jedi. Uh, my son, B. Scanlis, for helping me promote this. I want to give a shout out to P Funk. Once again, I want to give it out, give a shout out to James oh, yeah. Jones, not to be confused with Jim Jones, but James Jones. And uh, he brought us some chicken, so we're about to eat some chicken. Once again, little easy e. Oh, Thank yeah. you, my oh, brother. Yeah. Oh yeah, must uh, have. Yeah, I, man, my 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 uncle P Funk, man. Yeah, and came and and, and rode up here with me. You know, all yes. that. He on the other <laughs> side. You know what I mean? Y'all y'all can hear him, but I you know my apologies, but much love to my family. Yes, sir. And DJ Yella, once again, thank you. Oh, yeah. uh, Kiki Smooth, 
Thank you, and I'm sorry. Uh, KC beat the Raiders 41-14, and we're out of here. <laughs> Damn! Got it.